the Opie and Anthony Show. Other debauchery on the way. Stay there. 1027 WNEW. 212-757-1027 is our phone number. It's the ONA Show. How are you, Anthony? Hey. We had to run down the hall. We were watching uh, Caddyshack in the office. You're getting nothing in like it. I've only seen it uh, twice this week so far. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Let's go to Robert. Robert, what's going on today? Hey. Hey, Robert. Yeah, what's wrong? Talking to you. I can't believe you guys didn't get get laid at the prom. Wow. wow. Who said that? I never went to a prom. And never went to his prom. I went to my prom with a 15-year-old girl. I was 18. And, uh, yeah, I did not get any action. Man, I, I really feel sorry for you guys. A little kissy face. I think I might have touched Patch prom night. That's about it. Really? At least I'll admit it. Most oh, people... man, I have... Right, dude. Dude, what's with <laughs> that? Really oh, boy. Jeez, First... we've been on the air like uh... a few minutes, and you're cursing already. Uh, sorry. So, 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 the, uh, so you're a bigger man than me because you had your your dates uh, dress up overhead. Congratulations. I well, suck and you rock. Huh? Robert, the fact is most people don't get action at their prom. I find that hard to believe. Morning. I used to have a limousine service, man. Those kids used to give me big money to, to, to walk away from the car for a while. Are you talking about your prom or like the prom, or the prom you went to last week? Oh my God, I'm gonna freak out already. All right, first call. Let's just let's just take a breath, uh, write it off, and move on. Move on. Mark, you're next on WNEW. How are you? Hey, how you doing? Okay. What is that? What up? Yeah, love your show. I got a prom story. You know, you might not believe it, but I swear to God, it's true. Yeah. Uh, I graduated uh, in uh, in Haiti, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I went to an English school in Port-au-Prince, and uh, at, the, at our prom, we all had our dates, and we all drove our own cars and stuff. We ended up not getting any, so like me and like four, four or five of my best friends hopped on my in my '83 Honda Civic station wagon and got got us five hookers. <laughs> and uh, we all banging the hookers on my trunk, on my hood, on the side. And uh, we found out at the end that uh, the guy who had promised to pay for it was broke. So we didn't have no money to pay for them. Yeah. And they ended up chasing us down, throwing rocks at us and stuff. And we we, dri we driving out, we driving off, leaving them where we where we were at. We parked like, you know, by a hill somewhere. And they're like breaking my windows and stuff. And we, we're trying to jet with our pants down, tux tuxes on. Oh, it was a mess, man. So you got hookers. Oh, that's what that's what you get for that, you know, not getting any of the prom. So you got hookers at your prom. Yeah, we got uh, four prostitutes, and uh, only didn't in, pay them. Only in Haiti. All the way in Haiti. Port au Prince, Haiti. Swear to God. Well, I believe you. Anything yep. could happen in Haiti. Uh, yeah, I didn't even know they had <laughs> proms in Haiti. <laughs> well, you went to an English school in Haiti. Yeah, and you American got, school. And American you, school. And you guys had a prom. Yeah, like back in 87. I'm 30 now. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, the story is crazy, man. I still remember it like it was yesterday. Right on, man. Wacky Haiti. Congratulations, Mark. <laughs> Love your show. Hey, thank you. All right. All right, let's go to Neil. Hey, Neil, you're next on NEW. How are you? Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up? Well, 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 I, 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 I think most people don't get action on, on uh, prom night. Oh, I tried for eight hours in my prom to get some. Nothing happened. She wouldn't even let me kiss her. Yeah. Yeah, because most people go to uh, the prom with someone they don't even really know that well. Well, I made the mistake of going with a girl who was my best friend. I thought she'd give it up easier, but... <laughs> yeah, right. No such luck there. When you have a, a friend that's a girl when you're in high school, you, you never got action off them. Oh, I got it Got it one night on a weekend camping trip, and that was it. I thought maybe the prom would be the lucky night, and... <sighs> yeah. Yeah, you know what? It would have been better off staying home watching Caddyshack. All right. Thank you, Neil. Anytime. Syndication when Mark finds a real uh, female fan. Oh, speaking of that, there are some great pictures from yesterday's show on uh, the unofficial ONA website. I got to pop that. Foundrymusic.com. And I think we're going to replay that segment today because it, it, it's too good. It was really uncomfortable. Yeah, and the pictures are, are great. You know something? I, 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 can, I don't know how you can't tell. I don't care how good... They uh, look. Y y how could you not tell it's a guy? Yeah, the face uh, was a dead giveaway. Especially, uh, dude, the hands. I didn't see the hands. Oh, my God. It was just big man hands. You could palm a basketball. Really? That guy could have palmed a basketball.
We talked to Mark at the show. He he had no clue. Big feet, no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, and the voice. Yeah. Dead giveaway. People on the instant feedback that could just hear it were going, oh, my God. Guy. That was cool. A lot of the listeners were in on this one because Psycho Mark didn't really get to hear us interview her on the phone. Yeah. I mean, the longer you, you listen to her, you, you know, you can tell that it's a guy. Mm -hmm. So all the listeners were in on it. Uh, Psycho Mark was in the other studio, too busy to be listening to the show. So by the time we got him in here to talk for a quick, I mean, we made it really quick, like a minute. We were able to get away with it. Oh, uh, we got... There's a photo up on uh, WNAW.com as well. That's a, he knew, he didn't know that's a guy. You can tell on uh, Psycho Mark's face, though. He has no clue. Right. Well, she's a supermodel. Yeah, remember? I can't <laughs> wait to replay it today because we'll make sure everyone knows what's going on before we play it. And listen to all the funny lines Mark was coming up with. Oh, oh wow. she's a supermodel. Look at, hey, Mark, what do you think of uh, her ass? Oh, it's great. Blah, blah, blah. I'm looking. Uh, it, it, it's obvious. Come on. Come on now. Oh, straddling psycho Mark. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going through the pictures real quick. Yeah. Oh, the boob in the face. Yeah. Actually, boob, the man chest. The man chest that probably had, like, razor stubble. There's uh, Scraping against uh, the side of Mark's face. There's psycho Mark sitting there with the tranny uh, squatting down on his junk with, uh -huh. the, uh, with the butt that God only knows what's been going on <laughs> uh, back there. I got the picture up where he's now feeling for the package with the blindfold on it. There it is. Oof. Oh, my dear Lord. Oh, and there's, <laughs> there's a dude sucking on Psycho Mark's finger. <laughs> I forgot about that picture. Yes. There's some wow. great pictures on uh, foundrymusic.com, F-O-U-N-D-R-Y music.com. That's our unofficial ONA website. There she is, uh, kind of dancing for Psycho Mark. Yeah. No, it's going to be great. Uh, later on when we replay this segment, you can play along at home with the pictures. It'll be interactive radio for you. Yeah. You, you can go along with There's uh There's the lap dance that Psycho Mark's getting. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get the picture of uh, her, her, him, whatever, sucking his finger. Oh, that's, that's a good one. What number is it? Number eight? No. No, that's like the the chick, the he she on. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah, the sucking of the finger. All right. <laughs> and look at the Adam's apple. Yeah, yeah it's that, just yeah, like. Yeah, there's a huge Adam's apple. That, I mean, that, that, that's the giveaway right there. That that's is what a you dead always look for. Giveaway. You always look for the Adam's apple. Dead giveaway. John, what's going on? Yo, as, as soon as I heard this one's voice yesterday, I knew off the bat. That it was definitely a guy. That's what was so cool you about that. You can hear it, and I'm saying, does it? Can he tell? How could a girl that looks this good have a voice like that? That's what was so cool about it, because Psycho Mark didn't hear that part. And then when we got her back on the phone while we were taking a break, uh, Rick was telling her, you know, to to sound more, fem you know, uh, feminine. Yeah, because as soon as you heard that voice, you knew right off the bat. How the, could a girl that's a, a, go a gorgeous blonde have a voice like that and be gorgeous? Because the, the funny thing is, the instant feedback and the phone's just going nuts. People are like, oh, no, I know what this is all about. Yeah, yeah. And, then, uh, and then everyone on the, on the phone screen here is like, it's a guy, it's a guy. And we're hanging up on everyone because we didn't want Psycho Mark to see the screen. Yeah, I knew, I knew that's why you weren't putting any callers through because you didn't want to give it up. No, not at all. Take care, guys. All right. One of the listeners hit it on the head. They said we knew something was up when the when the girl or the guy, whatever, walked into the studio, and you and I had no comments. Yeah, whatsoever. we weren't saying a word. <laughs> None whatsoever. Because we didn't want the tape to be used against us. No, you no, know? absolutely not. <laughs> Whew. Frightening. Yeah, check the pictures out on the on the website. Very funny. And in case you missed it from yesterday, I'm telling you, it's one of the funniest things we've done in the last uh, I don't know three or four months. We're gonna replay it in the five o'clock hour. Yeah. If uh, you have a friend of the show that uh, didn't hear it, please let him know, okay? Right. All right, let's move on and talk to James. Hey, James, what's up? What's going on, guys? How are you? Nothing. Uh, did you guys see uh, Survivor last night? Survivor. Uh, it's my new favorite show, Survivor on CBS. I'm telling you, I'm hooked. It's on, what, Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock? Yeah, I get to see it end right when I get home. <laughs> you got I the, the TiVo, though, right? I don't have it hooked up. I, I'm uh, getting my wall unit uh, uh, Saturday, Opie, yeah. and I don't want to be uh, fiddling with wires. Yeah. Actually, last night I got actually I got really mad, like physically mad. Why? Because I mean that dude, BB, 
Yeah, I guess we could talk about it. I mean, every week they um, they have to vote someone off the island. Of course, the last uh, person on the island wins a million dollars. And last night, uh, this one tribe, because there's two tribes, Anthony, they split yeah. them up into two tribes. They have to work together and stuff, blah, blah, blah. Then they have competitions. And if your tribe wins the competition, then you're immune from having to vote one of your tribesmen off the island. Oh, really? Yeah. And eventually, when you know it gets down to about eight people or so, they're gonna they're gonna make the two tribes into one. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah, they would have so, to. And, and this old guy, I mean, he he's building everything. He's making chopsticks out of wood and oh, everything. And, 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 and this, or this this old stubborn guy, 64. Is that the Navy SEAL guy? No, no, that's Rudy. Oh, okay. I, I got all the names down and everything. I'm hooked on this show. I'm on message God. boards and everything. I'm Jeez. telling you, this I show, gotta, I gotta this show is absolutely great. Absolutely great. It's only going to get better in the coming weeks. But It's unbelievable. Uh, his name was BB, the 64-year-old guy in one of the tribes. Uh, I am BB. <laughs> yeah. I am BB. Remember him? Yeah, he's as old <laughs> as that BB, I'm sure. Um... And uh, this uh, this uh, this guy was doing everything for the tribe. Built this amazing hut out of like what 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 uh, like just wood and uh, and leaves and stuff. You right? mean the guy was helping out, thinking that was going to go? Helping out. The guy he was, was doing everything. He did everything, <laughs> and like he's screaming and yelling and getting everyone else to work. And a couple of them are real lazy and they didn't feel like working, so they're laying around. Oh. This guy built their shelter for them. Uh, they needed, uh, you know, chopsticks, you know, to eat the rice and, and ghoul they were they were cooking up. Yeah. He made homemade chopsticks for the whole tribe. Opie, it, you know, it, it really pisses me off is, is something. You know, I got him working over here, and you got that stupid black plot that, <gasps> that is just Ramona. laying on her ass all day. Ramona. Yeah, I thought... Yeah, I thought, I, I, it pisses me off that she's doing anything when she's going yeah, Ramona, out. Like Ramona, the black lady, she claimed that she was... Uh, I yeah, want to push... She, she was sick, so while this uh, this guy, BB, the old guy, was working his ass off, she's just laying around inside the shelter that everyone else built. Oh, and stuff. boy. And they, they voted the guy off? Why? Why did they... Uh... Well, he kind of hinted that he wanted to be voted off cause, uh, for some weird reason out of nowhere. I think, it, I, thought, mm. I think he felt like everyone was kind of starting, you know... Even though he was doing a lot of stuff for his little uh, tribe, yeah. So, so what they did, they had a a, a bug competition. Ant. They had these disgusting. What was it? Uh, it was like um, like oh god, it was just like this weird like larva larva thing. Yeah, like they oh. had, and, and it was huge too. And it was and, like just and, withering. And, yeah, let me let me explain to Ant because he didn't get to see it. So, okay. so the two tribes they meet for their their weekly competition. They had to eat these larvae. It they kind of look like uh, really fat caterpillars. Like really fat, like an inch wide. Oh my no! Come and then, on, and come on! And they're moving around, right? So they got the two tribes sitting uh, across from each other on, on this table, and they had to go down the line, and each member had to eat one of these bugs that are moving as they're putting it in their mouth. Stop. Like huge, just gushy caterpillar-looking things swirling oh. around. And oh. if uh, if one member of a, a tribe refused to eat it, they would lose. So it turns out everyone ate them because, I mean, you don't want to be the guy that says, look, man, I ain't eating this, this, this larvae thing, whatever. Oh, I, I got nauseous no looking at that. Wait it's a minute. Is. You bite into it. It's going to be all bug juice in your mouth. Oh, yeah. Oh, you see, you see the people just, their faces just making that face like, oh, my God. A lot of people were swallowing them whole and stuff. Well, that would be the way to go. And this but this one black guy, he I forgot. What's the black guy's name? On uh, you mean the, uh, the uh, YMCA dude? Uh, yeah. Oh, God. He's Whatever. But African, yeah. He couldn't eat the bug at first, but his tribe pretty much forced him, and he did it. And then everyone from each tribe ate the bug, so now they're like, okay, now we have to figure out who wins and who loses. So each team got to uh, pick uh, the weakest link from the other tribe to eat more bugs. And then those two people that obviously had the, the hardest time with eating the bugs in the first round had to eat two now. Two! Wow. Two moving, huge, larvae, fat, caterpillar-looking things. So it just pissed me off that she didn't do a, a you know a goddamn thing. Yeah. So and, and he's getting kicked off the island. Yeah. So, I'm like, so the team, stupid. so the team with uh, BB, this guy, 64, that did everything for the tribe. Yeah. They finally lost, and they have to meet uh, for like a tribal council in the middle, pretty much in the middle of the night, in the middle of this island. They have to walk for a while where there's like poisonous snakes and stuff. They have to get to them this uh, this tribal area, and then they vote the guy off the the island. No. And, then, and then the guy we talked to on the air yesterday, he's the one that distinguishes, uh, extinguishes uh, the flame. Excuse me, extinguishes the flame on the guy yeah. who voted off. And he immediately has to walk back to camp by himself, and the rest of his tribe never sees him again. Yeah, actually, I'm making a prediction. I'm telling Sandy you. was crying. It was hilarious. <laughs> I was laughing. I'm like, this is so freaking sick. Because, you know, 
you, every week you got to vote one of your pals off the island, basically, because they're all bonding and stuff. Yeah. You know? And it's either you or them, so you know you got to vote for somebody. Oh. I'm telling you, that group will not make it. I think without BB. Yeah. Literally. I mean, they're just gonna fall apart. Yeah. So the 64 year old guy, you know, his uh, his flame was extinguished. He had to walk away by himself, and Sandy's just bawling on the couch. And I'm <laughs> laughing. I'm like, this is awesome. This is wild. I'm, <laughs> I am completely ho hooked, man. But what I don't get is that is that if if like if one person gets the million dollars, right? Yeah. If they're doing that, then why are they having teams? You know, I mean, if they have teams, that means they have to work together, then go against each other. Is that the way it works? I don't get it. I, I think what's going to happen, uh, they just got the two teams to start the whole competition and stuff. Eventually, you know, they're going to just make it into one team. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of weird things going on because, you know, you have to work together, but also you want to beat out everyone in your tribe. You want to be the last one standing for the money, too. So they're doing some bonding, but then they have to do some backstabbing. It's wild. It's a great concept. Uh, it's real world uh, brought to the next level. I can't, I'm can't, I can't get past the, uh, the bug. bug. Oh, dude, it was insane. Insane. Beetle well, larvae, everyone's saying it well, is. Well, thank you, James. Okay, man. Yeah. You guys rock. Yeah, it was beetle larvae. Uh, Cindy, what's going on? Hey, it's, so I was just calling to uh, talk about the Survivor Show. Yeah. I was watching it last night. That guy, BB, that he wanted to be voted off. Yeah. One of the problems was that he built the um, little enclosure thing. He built it right on the beach, so yeah. the tide's going to come up and wash them out. Yeah, yeah. He built it too close to where the tide comes up, and Yeah. Oh, so really? that was kind of a problem. So now people are like, what the F is this guy doing? They're, they're, people are starting to get pissed now. Oh. Even though he did all this work and built this just incredible shelter or hut thing. But, yeah, he built it too close to where the tide's coming up. So now that's when they started having a little problem with him. Like, what the F? We just oh, put all this yeah. work into this, and this is going to be flooded out. He effed up. And I think that's when he finally said, well, uh, you know, maybe I should be voted off the island. Yeah, plus he was arguing with some one of the younger guys on it, one of the um, young dudes. He yeah. Some guy didn't get along at all. Yeah. yeah well, they, they say the generation gap thing is pretty big on that show. Like the young people getting pissed at the old people, vice versa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the the first week they voted this girl Sonya off. The other tribe did. Uh, she fell in the competition. They had yeah, to, that, that was that was that was hilarious too. I'm laughing and Sandy's crying, but <laughs> Sandy's just like weeping at this uh, program. She, she was crying last night when BB had to walk through the forest by himself after he was told to leave the island. But uh, in the first week, Sonya, they had this torch competition. Anthony, they had these like raft type things. They start in the middle of like this lagoon. Yeah. And on the way to shore, you had to light these torches as you go, and it's, it's kind of like a you know a race. Everyone's pushing the raft mm -hmm. along, and then you get on the beach, and then you have to light some torches real fast, and then a final torch, and whoever did it first wins. Okay. Okay. So this girl Sonya, as they're coming out of the water, she's like an older lady, like in her sixties. She completely falls, trips, and that's the reason they lost. Oh. So because she did that, they all just flat out said, okay, she's done. She's done. The weak well, link. The weak could, link. Oh. You could tell also in, the, in the beginning of the first show, they said that Sonya was just a musician. It's like, well, what can she contribute? She's yeah. some 65-year-old lady that's playing, I don't know, like some little guitar thing. Yeah, it's really inter helpful. It's a really interesting show because, like, that one tribe, you know, voting BB off, the guy who did everything, now the rest of the tribe, are, they're going to have to step up and... Uh, and start, you know, pulling their weight. I'm uh, loving the show, though. Cindy, Cindy are you yeah, liking it? I think it's awesome. I love it. And next week? I'm looking at the the pictures of uh, all of the uh, survivor people. As yeah. you get the pictures up there, i got to tell you, next week? Yeah. They, they've already teased it. Yeah. They eat rats. No! Because <laughs> they need protein really bad. One guy, one guy on one of the teams, and they were all pissed at him, he built this, like, this huge, like, fishing pole. Yeah. Like a homemade pole. It looked like something you'd find on Gilligan's Island. He spent like, I don't know, how many hours did that guy spend fishing? Like all day, like eight or nine yeah. hours? Yeah. Didn't catch a thing, and everyone was pissed at him. But, <laughs> but he, he at least at least was trying to get some fish for protein and stuff. Right, right. Because they have enough fruit and all that crap, but yeah, they, uh, need some, uh, protein. they need the protein to survive. <laughs> Who is the guy that was washing his clothes and they're cooking and they're drinking water? I was just about that's to bring BB. that up. That was BB too. That that's another reason why they started getting pissed at the guy that did that did everything that they voted off the island last night. Yeah. BB, they come back to camp, I guess, or or a few people away, and they you know they came they come back to see BB washing his his only t shirt in the drinking water. Whoa! And they have this set up where like the the fresh water that they need to survive yeah. is like like it's a hike in the middle of the jungle, right? 
So you right. have to organize some of your members, right? You guys go get the water. It's today. not just like running water somewhere. No. So basically, I mean, the point is, it, it's very, very valuable stuff. And here's this guy <laughs> in his sixties washing his only T-shirt with the drinking water in the pot they were going to use to cook that night. So this. And he had no problem with it either. He saw nothing wrong with it. Yeah. They're all screaming at him. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thank you, Cindy. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. You guys are awesome. All right. We got Vinny the racist. Here we go. Vinny. Hello, fellas. Hey. Hi. I just thought. This show is so funny in that how it mimics real life. I mean, here you have the hard-working white man. <laughs> then he gets no credit. Then you have the black who does nothing. Nothing. And she gets to stay on the island. I don't understand. They're always getting like a break, no matter what happens. I mean, what, what is it with these people? Can they... What's the problem? Vinny, there's a big hole in your logic. The, the white people uh, voted the, the old white guy off. There's, yes, there's exactly. more white in, white people in that tribe than black people. Exactly, Opie. That's what I'm talking about. These white people are like the liberals in this country. They don't <laughs> see. They don't see what the hell's going on. Anthony saw when he went to the movies the other day. Right, Anthony? You saw exactly what this world is coming. I haven't gone to the movies since the Raging Bull in 1980 because of the blacks and sticks. Who they ruined it for? They can't go to the damn movies anymore. Oh, oh, oh my right. God! Wow, there's Vinny. Vinny, I love how Vinny always tries to pull you into his circle. <laughs> yeah, he's like Anthony knows what I'm talking about, right. and like he expects me to go, "Yeah, Vinny, I I absolutely know what you're talking about," you know. Oh, yeah, man. sing Heil, Vinny. I know what you're talking about. Right, Opie, right? <laughs> yeah. You know it. You just I know you don't want to say it, and that's cool. Yeah. You can just sit there and not say it. But we all know you understand my point. That's exactly what he does on like, our Vinny, show. Vinny, he's trying yeah. to pull everyone into his circle. Uh, Sean, what's going on? Why is oh, Spaz hanging up on these people? That, that, hello? Holy crap, I'm going to punch him in the head. He just hung up on a bunch of people that had good stuff today. Hey. What? Hey. Hey, Sean, what's up? Hey, uh, baby. Last night, that show, the best part was when that Navy SEAL found out the other guy was queer. And he was uh, talking about how he was talking to him, but not in a queer kind of way. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> it was pretty funny. The, the, the Navy SEAL guy on the other team, Anthony, the other yeah. tribe, he's, um, uh, how old is that guy? 72, I think? Somewhere around there, 72 yeah. in sick shape. He's a, an ex-Navy SEAL guy, yeah. What's that guy, Rudy? Uh, yeah, Rudy. Yeah. And he, uh, you know, he pretty much uh, admitted he doesn't really like queers. <laughs> <laughs> and which guy is that? He said that, that right? Is yeah. That? But, but, yeah. That's, but, that's but, what made it funny, the way, you know, you yeah, can see the age difference. Yeah, he know, goes, queer. I'm not into these uh, queers. And then he finds out one of the guys he's been hanging out with uh, for the first six days or whatever, Richard. From New Hampshire. I think that's the guy that beat his kid, right? Yeah. Richard looks a little off. Well, Richard um, is uh, one of those queers. Richard looks like the guy from that uh, that uh, home decorating show, the interior decorator guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. Hello? He was, he said he We're going to do something with uh, yeah, he, checkerboard. Yeah, he's like, tablecloth. he's like the fat version of that guy. He was, said he was bonding with him, but not in a queer way. Yeah, because then he had a little conflict. He goes, oh, no, I've been bonding with this guy. Not in a queer way. <laughs> he wanted to make sure everyone understood that. And he goes, I don't know what my friends are going to think when I go That's back right. home. And then they have a they have a scene of uh, where Rudy, the the Navy SEAL guy, is uh, putting lotion on uh, Gay Richard's back. And what? It, it was pretty. Funny. How did that come about? <laughs> if he doesn't like the queers, well, that that's where the conflict happened. He he bonded with the guy before he found out he was. Queer. Oh, and then he found out he was. Oh, so he was and, enjoying it. So no, he was open minded enough to realize. Well, the Navy SEAL guy could have slit his throat with that copper tone bottle. <laughs> yeah, he probably could right. Have. So I, that was pretty funny too. Yeah. All right, guys. Ooh. Thank you, Sean. Take it easy. All right. Mm. Richard Hatch. I'm ecstatic. Tim, what's going on? Not much. How are you? Great. I would have killed BB for uh He washed his shirt not only with the only water they had. They were going to cook rice with that water. Yeah. And, they, and there was no way they didn't eat. Yeah, I know. That, and that, that tribe that BB was in, they're never going to win a competition. There's going to be zero people in that tribe, and everybody left in the other tribe. <laughs> Really? Is that how it looks? No. It's Gotta get to catch awful. the show. No, right, right now they've uh, both sides have lost a member. Both sides lost uh, their uh, an old uh, an older member. Oh, did they? Yeah. Well, talk about getting protein. I'd give some protein to a couple of those chicks. Yeah, there's a couple of chicks I was checking out. Yeah. Yeah. Forget the rats. You know, there's some of those guys should be uh, donating protein. Next week they eat rats though, and they they showed them cooking them up and everything. Oh, 
God. I can't believe they were busting on the guy with the fishing pole. I mean, that guy, that was a pretty good fishing pole he had. It was good, right? Yeah. All day, he's just throwing the line out. He didn't get nothing. It's eight hours, not even a nibble. They've already used the rats on the island, Ed, for, yeah. uh, for bait in their lobster traps. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they, didn't, they haven't gotten anything. The guy was, like, fishing in, in waist-deep water on a beach. It's just so funny. We were talking to the host yesterday, and it's interesting because they're living off the land, and the crew, the the film crew, and the, and the host, you know, they're living large. Man. Well, they got a clam bait going out in the back of the woods. Yeah, pretty much. On the other side of the island, they got everything that they need to survive. While, <laughs> while the other people, you know, the the contestants, they got to start eating rats to survive. <laughs> All right. All right. Check it out. Thank you. Who's the hottie? Uh, Jenna. Uh, I'll tell you which one I thought was hot. The 22 year old. What's this, Gretchen? 38 year old married homemaker? No. From Clarksville, Tennessee, and they throw her in the mix? Yeah. They, yeah, they have all walks of life. That was the, that was the, uh. Oh, she's no, no, six who, years as a survival instructor for the Air Force. Okay. No, so who's hotter than Jenna, though, Anthony? Who? Believe it or not, I mean, the picture doesn't do her justice here. This girl, Colleen. All right, let me see where she is. Okay, whoa. Wait a minute. Really? Yeah. Like I said, the picture doesn't do uh, do her justice, but on the show, she's uh, she's definitely looking hot. Let me see, Colleen, twenty three. Uh, where's she from? That kind of looks. Yeah, that picture is a little weird. No, let me see the picture you got on yours. Well, it's the same one, only blown up a little more. Nah, see, yeah, she's be she's better looking than that, or yeah. she was last night anyway. Yeah, it looks like a guy. She looks hotter without a shower, I guess. <laughs> Now, is it true that there's another gay guy on this island, and uh, could they hook up? I, I'm hearing there's another gay guy. They haven't. Uh, so, uh, gay. They haven't found that out yet. Mark, what's Tribal, going on? Uh, anal. BB, BB was definitely the variable in the non-queer tribe. However, I have a theory. You got to get rid of the old people. Mm -hmm. You got to get rid of the blacks because, as per Pomona, she don't want to do anything. Let's just sit around while Jarvis is jumping up and down like some other kind of queer. Because you can't eat a freaking bug, you faggot. <laughs> and then get rid of the blacks, get rid of the old people. Then maybe you could have something brewing. Keep the doctor in case somebody gets sick. He might be able to bandage it up. Perfect example about the old people, Sonya getting dragged. That was hysterical. That was funny in the first that week. Was just, I kept watching that. I wish I would have taped that. That would have been like my... Uh, Entry reel. Whenever I started my morning, not feeling good. Mark, Watching this old bag get dragged. Oh, Mark, yeah, get dragged. Yeah. How dramatic is it when one of the one of the, the uh, tribesmen get voted off the island? They have to walk by themselves back to yeah, camp. It's, it's like uh, it's like uh, what was that movie in the military academy? The Walk of Shame, or whatever the hell. When they turn their backs and you can never look at them again. Yeah. And then the host, that queer there, he starts going, uh, "You cannot say goodbye. Yeah. You must let them go off our tribe. Please yeah. extinguish your flame. Yeah. So how? <laughs> so Jesus. Christ, finally this guy gets off the island. He's like, and you know, BB was kind of cool. He was like a tyrant, yeah. but he's old school. You know, he's taking care of business. He probably treated everybody like they were his kids. Yeah. He built a, he built a cabin like Robinson Caruso. Whoa, 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 yeah. um, He's like yelling at him. I mean, you know, it's not good enough. I mean, God. But, uh, oh, it's hysterical. That whole show. I want to go up because I've been through an... I can do good on that. All right, wow. Mark. Thank you. I know I can definitely be on that show, but yes, there is another queer. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Liz. Bye. I think everybody thinks they could probably do a better job. You know what I mean? In all that. fairness to Ramona, the black chick, they did, did, do have uh, some great footage of her last night puking. Puking from what? The bugs? Uh, from pretty much everything. She can't eat anything. Really? Candy, what's going on? How you guys doing? Great. You guys rule, man. Thank you. I just want to say, with the, those girls, which one was the one with the pink bathing suit or the orange bathing suit, the bikini? She was hot, man. I was just playing with my uh, yeah. tongue, checking her out. Yeah, that might have been Jenna. Jenna's definitely hot. She was. And how about those peeking nips on the sister, even though she's useless? <laughs> yeah, I saw those. If guys. I was on that island, I'd be chewing on those things, and then I'd vote her out. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of people are uh, getting hooked on this show. It's, it's really oh, it is, man. I'm going to have to start checking it out. And, and what's good about it, uh, you know, they, they, they update you just before they start the show. Give you a quick uh, synopsis of what ha what has happened so far. So, All right, man. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Kenny. Take care. I think we pretty much covered uh, Survivor from last night, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that pretty much does it. Richard on Survivor is Big Gay Al. <laughs> he does look like Big Gay Al. <laughs> is that true? Do we have uh, Amy on the phone? Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay. We gotta take a break first. Uh, I've spilled coffee. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, OD, real fast, what's going on? Yo, you saw the black girl's nips, though? Yeah, of course you I caught him? Yeah, we all did. Yo, my God, yo, I'm feeling this show, man. It's good, right? It's good. It's definitely hot, man. It's my, I mean, I love Real World on MTV, I'm not going to lie. That's starting up soon, too. But this, uh, I don't know, this is definitely more interesting. No, nah, Real World is kind of whack. This is more, you know... This is more like the, they're getting on each other's nerves, you know what I'm saying? They're in the middle of nowhere. But, yo, quick fast, yo, the rats, Yeah. you wouldn't be able to eat like a New York City rat because they're like full of toxins and stuff. This island's like, you know, it's pristine, you know what I'm saying? These rats eat pure food. It uh, wouldn't be nothing to cook yeah, a rat like so, that. So up. it's not, it might as well just be a, a London broil or something. Oh, you go. Oh, OD, I will get you one of these rats, and I will give you a thousand bucks out of my goddamn p uh, pocket if you sit in this studio and eat a rat. Eat a rat. Make it happen, son. You will not eat a rat. I'll eat it, V. It got to be from over there, though. I want it from Borneo. I want to see his passport and everything. Well, if someone could get me, like, an overseas rat, <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will make that uh, bet with you. Don't be getting no rats from downtown, kid. <laughs> yeah. Down in the subway. Been nibbling yeah. on some homeless. I mean, it shouldn't even be all right, because we're, like, at the top of the food chain, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The has got, like, mad protein. Like, yo, I watched this, this killer jail flick. Yo, and this cat was eating big roaches, yo, and living. I don't know. Yo, come on, man. It's just a crunchy. Just got to eat it, bro. I had a tough time watching them eat the bugs last night. I can't nah. imagine them eating uh, rats next week. You on the real? I started dry heaving, and by the time I got to the bathroom, I was I, I took a dump and threw up at the same time, yo. Yeah. It, it was disgusting. It was pretty, uh, yeah. You know who made it disgusting, though? The, the, the fag YMCA basketball coach? Yeah, the black He made it, like, really, like, uh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was pretty prissy, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yo, he put the heebie-jeebies on, man. If he would have just, you know, bow, crushed it up, and that was it, man, he would have been all good. That was Jervis, right? Garbage or Jervis, but, yeah. Yeah, you know. all right. But you're digging the show, huh? I'm loving it, B. All right. All right, baby. Peace. Peace. Let's go to Mike. Mike, you're next on NEW. Yo, what's up, fellas? What's going on? How are you? Anthony. Uh, yes. You're telling me that you wouldn't need a bug for a million dollars, bro? This is for a million dollars. Oh, no, dude, wait, dude, wait, wait, wait. The, the bug isn't for a million dollars. No, that's not guaranteed. It's that's not guaranteed. Uh, they're going to start eating rats next week, and God knows what's going to happen in the in the coming weeks. Mike. Dude, you're talking a million bucks, though. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mike. It's not going to kill you to make you stronger. Listen, if, if but, somebody said eat a bug and I'll give you a million bucks, I'd hop that thing right down. But That's a different it, story. you could eat the bug on this show and then uh, end up just going home and getting nothing for it. Right. So F that. I would have a well, tough time eating a rat for a million dollars. I guess it depends on did how you see, did you, see, you know what I mean? Did you see the upcoming uh, um, uh, scenes where they showed the rats just laying there getting ready to uh, be filleted for these people? Filleted. Yeah, oh, know, my God. Put a barbecue sauce on them. You ah, it taste the rats are just disease carriers. Mike, they, 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 they couldn't even really get all the hair off the rats. And it, it, it was sick. Hey, fellas. Yeah. Syndication? Yeah, that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. All right. All right. We're, we got to take a break really fast. Uh, Brian. Hey. Hey. thousand bucks, I'll eat two rats. You'll eat two rats? Definitely. Barbecue them up, I'll, eat, I'll be right down. Seriously. W would you eat a New York City rat? Sure, why not? You cook them up right, I'll eat it. Hmm. I don't, I don't see what people's reluctance. Meat is meat. Well, we do do this game called Win Stockbroker Dave's Money. What's the game? We're, we we put a challenge out there, and we see who comes forward. Oh, let's, let's do a rat off. Let's see who can eat them. Uh, Fourth of July, let's a see rat? who can eat the most rats. No, Barbecued no. rat? No, Brian. Uh, hibachi? Brian, Ant and I don't need any more contestants. If we can find a thousand bucks, you will come down here and eat a rat on our show? I'll bring an eight-pack of buns. <clears throat> How would you cook it? Well, I don't know. That's it. Um, we've got a barbecue. We bring a hibachi. we'll get a little hibachi and go downstairs in the courtyard. Ah, and uh, right. who's going to skin onion? it? Uh, Brian. Where do you get them first? Rats? Yeah. I have no clue, but I have no reluctance to eat them. Uh oh, like we that. got a guy on line eight that'll eat the rat for only five hundred dollars. <laughs> eat that rat. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, man, I'm there. All right, we got two guys. All and right, now we need someone rat. out there to find us rats. But you can't just get a city rat. You can't get like well, a, a city rat. You can't what, a pet shop rat. rat. Sewer rat. You can't like food rats that you feed to your snakes. You need like a big rat, and then who's gonna gut them and skin them right. and prepare them right. for cooking? All right, you guys. Can do that. All right, you guys are on. 
You guys are on. Now we need someone out there that knows where we could get live rounds. I'm, I'm ready to puke just listening to this. Just the idea of it. You take the fur off it, it's just me. Yeah, well, sure. We need someone that... Those are corpse. This is what we need. I'm serious. We're putting out the word right now. We need we need someone that will be able to get us a, a couple live rats. <sighs> We're fresh. And then we need someone that knows how to prepare them. <laughs> prepare. First, you take the rat and it's got to be beheaded and well, gutted. Well, we need someone. Fill it in the pan. <laughs> Throw in the pan and lightly saute. Well, we need we need someone that is at least is gonna cook it a little better than we would by just throwing it on a barbecue. Microwave. You know what I'm saying? Nuke or my, or oh. nuking it. Jesus. God, why is that worse than barbecuing it? Like barbecuing it. Ew. Oh, how about nuking it? Oh, now that's really disgusting. Well, because everyone knows. Like, I mean, even chicken doesn't taste good after you know. Can you imagine no. a rat? A rat. Oh, God. Rat. Barbecued, fry it. Uh, Lou, you really are, uh, you're in for this, huh? Sure. Barbecued, you know, with some marinade. Well, take some marinade and put it on the run. Wait, we got uh, the, the, the building manager on the line. Hold on. Oh, really? Yeah, supposedly. Hey, Rich. Hey, guys. How What's you up, doing? Man? What's going on? Well, uh, are you I'm the really the. Uh, some property in the Bronx and, uh, oh, okay. In the basement, I've seen rats. Biggest. Basically, like from your elbow to the tip of your finger. Oh wow, that would be uh, like a turkey. That'd be like a full meal for this guy. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, if they catch him, I mean, I, I don't know about catching it alive. No, and, we uh, we could go ahead. You know, quickly killed. The only thing is, I don't know what he's got in his system. What we, you know? Well, that's just it. Him. You don't know. You, you ha we need. Do I have to catch him alive. I saw one run between the super's legs. Oh my God! All right, I, I'm totally serious. We need someone that knows uh, a little bit about uh, rats and how to cook them for these two guys. Uh, I'm and, and where are we gonna get them? I'm serious. If you know anything, please give the show a call. We want to make this I'm happen. I'm thinking a pet store. They rats. gotta have some big rats there to feed to like if you own a friggin' boa constrictor that's 12 right. feet long. All right. With that said, you don't feed them little rats. pinkies. All right. With that said, we have some uh, pet stores that listen to the show. Give us a call. Tell us what the deal is. What's the biggest rat? That uh, is out there in, in a pet store. Wait, Sarah knows where to get rats. Sarah. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's going on? Um, nothing. If you could get the rat, like it's not, it wouldn't be hard to cook them. You know, you don't know what a rat tastes like. Nobody's really eaten one, so it might not even be that bad. Well, do you know where to get them? You can get them from any um, pet store because people have to feed them to like giant snakes and stuff. Yeah, but well, that's just it. We can't uh, get one of those little rats. We need well, a they... big rat. Well, hey, if you turn got your radio down. Pet they have pretty big ones. I mean, people also have them for pets. All right. Well. Uh, well, this guy Matt will eat a rat for free. Sarah, I gotta hang up on you because you because uh, she had a radio on. That is so distracting. It might be the solar uh, fl storms, Opie, affecting people's brains. I think we got to talk about that later. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little frightened. We, we'll talk about that later. We, we just got to get this whole rat thing. On. We need yeah, rats. Yeah. We need rats. We need a pet store to call us right now. And we got Lou and Brian on the line. That they're more than willing to eat uh, eat rats on our show. How big? Like a couple of pounder. Need a rat that's like as big as your fist. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like something with some meat on it. We're talking Yeah, like an eight inch rat. I've done some hunting in my day, Opie, and I've uh, bagged some uh some dove, things like that, like some birds and stuff. Mm -hmm. You shoot with the shotgun. Mm -hmm. And uh they're not very big. You just get a few of them and you barbecue them up like that. And there's there's meat on them. So if you get a rat the size of your fist, that'll work. Okay. And then who's going to prepare it? The people that are going to eat it? Maybe we could get a chef down here that can cook it up real nice. Yeah, no, well, we could do that. Because it's got to be uh, uh, skinned. I don't care uh, how you dress it up, man. It's still a rat. Cooking rats and, and mice. mice. Where'd you find this, Ben? God, the uh, Internet is just a wonderful thing. Stewed cane rat. Skin and eviscerate the rat and split it lengthwise. Fry until brown in a mixture of peen uh, butter and peanut oil. Cover with water. Add tomatoes and tomato puree. Red hot peppers and salt. Simmer the rat until tender and serve with rice. Roasted field mice. Skin and eviscerate field mice. Skewer them and roast over an open fire of course. These are probably great as hors d'oeuvres with margaritas or softy dogs. Uh. Grilled rat Bordeaux style. <laughs> Alcoholic rats inhabiting 
wine cellars are skinned and eviscerated, brushed with a thick sauce of olive oil and crushed shallots, and grilled over fire with broken wine barrels. That sounds tasty. That is a tasty rat. <laughs> yeah. Did you get that at Big Kahuna Rat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Reed, what's up? Uh, I, got, I got a way I can get you some rats. How? A uh, buddy of mine traps them all the time, and he skins them, and that, you know, the uh, the fur inside a glove? Yeah. That, that's a uh, muskrat. That's well, muskrat is different. No, we want Muskrat is much different. We're pretty much... Oh, when, you, when you trap rats, you know, sometimes... Real rats happen to meander their way into the traps. So we're, we're going for New York City rats. New York City scum rats, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get up you. <laughs> All right, Reed. Bye. All right, we'll figure this out. Matt says he'll do it for free. Matt? Yes, sir. You'll eat the rat for free. What's up, boys? Yeah, I'm an ex-Marine. I've eaten worse. Oh, see? Ex-Marine. You're out there I'll on Paris Island right. biting the heads off of those things. Hang out, I'll eat it for free. No problem. No problem? What does it taste like? Nope. It's just the regular brown meat. Tastes, tastes like, like chicken. I've, eat, I've eaten the grubs. I've done it all. I've eaten yeah. a lot of worse things. So you'll, for free. so you'll come down just to eat it for free to hang out with us. You got it. Hmm. All right, hold, we got, we hold on the line. Rats hold on the line. It. Rick's going to talk to you. Uh, Brian. Yeah. I don't know if $1,000 is going to make it at this point. Well, I'll still come down. I heard the last guy said. I'll come down. I, I think we can get money, though. I'm gaming. I think stockbroker Dave's uh, game. To give out some money to see somebody eat a rat? Probably. We're going to have to get a stripper to make it sexual in some way for Stockbroker Day. But I think, uh, yeah. I think we can figure something out. There you go. Get a little... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I know. I was going to say something like that. that would be Brian, funny. Rick's going to talk to you. Hold okay, on. Okay, cool. Okay. I think we're on, Anthony. Lou. Hey, Lou. We just Yo, what's up, guys? What's up? Hey, five bills, man. I'll do it. All right, we'll see. Because now we got, yeah. a guy, we got a couple guys that are willing to do it pretty much for free. Oh, bummer. Why, is it a pet shop rat? Hold on the line, though. We might have a competition. First guy that does it, you know, gets the, gets cash, and, and everyone else has to walk. Thank you. All right, hold on. Cool, Rick, cool. Rick will talk to you. <clears throat> talk to Matt on line two, Brian on seven, and uh, Lou on eight. We got, we got three guys that will come down and, and eat rats on our show, a la like the Survivor show on CBS. And now there's diagrams on how to cook the rat and cut them up and stuff. Oh, my God. I can't look at this. Mm. All right, now, let's take a break. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. There, Yeah, there's little diagrams on how to cut them. Yeah. Rat raised delicious rat plate. <laughs> oh, look at that. They're just, he's just kind of filleting it. Oh, my God. Look how he's cutting it. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking we try to make this happen tomorrow. All we need is is uh, some rats and someone to prepare them. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Someone give us a call. That's a big rat. Two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. Anthony. Yeah. Stoner Stoner Amy from the other day is uh, standing by to talk to us to tell us what happened after her uh, mom grabbed the phone from her when she was ready to play Stoner Spelling Bee with us. Yeah. Uh, there was something about rehab and cocaine and heroin. There was an ugly phone call from the other day. We'll get an update on that. And also, uh, real fast, if you want a, a WOW sticker, we're doing another WOW sticker stop today at uh, Ranch One, Anthony. 315 7th Avenue, corner of 28th Street. 7th and 28th Street, okay? All right. Uh, Gorilla Boy Jeff Norris will be there at 430, handing out the WOW stickers and having lots of fun with you guys, all right? Right. We'll be back to talk to Stoner Amy next. Be and Anthony. There's no level too low that you guys won't stick to. Stop. Stop. You'll love Paisano. Yeah. Of Mulberry Street in Little Italy, Anthony. No rats there. No, 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 no. Just no, no. wonderful, uh, authentic Italian cuisine. Joey has bad timing with his life rates. I got Doesn't it. he? <laughs> Made from old world recipes, Opie. Right from Italy. And, uh... You go down there for lunch, man. Get their incredible pasta lunch specials. They're huge. We love it. We're down there all the time. Nice, relaxed atmosphere. Warm and friendly. You got uh, the seats on the outside now. They got the table set up so you can watch the uh, freak show walking down Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Paisanos of Mulberry Street. Ask for Joey, the owner. You get a glass of wine in the house. 
And uh, well, uh, Paisano got a great wine list, too. Yes, they do. You can go down there and just booze it up if you want on some of Paisano's wonderful wine. The Heart of Little Italy, 136 Mulberry. Give them a call, 965-1188. 965-1188. They're open seven days a week. Weekends till 2. 2! Of course. Give them a call. Paisano, Mulberry Street, 965-1188. Eight, we love it. We gotta play that Casey Kasem bit. Yeah, I know. Some people were like, "Oh, okay, now I get it." Uh, Paisano, Mulberry Street, in the heart of Little Italy. Hi, Opie and Anthony. This is Hot Wax Shannon. You want to touch my Kiki? What? what? That's Hot Wax Shannon, Anthony. We're really getting desperate for uh, celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. No, we got a huge celebrity coming in tomorrow. It's the homeless guy from the corner. Listen to all I don't want to commit and say who the funniest comedian alive is, but just let me say this. Brian Regan coming back on the program tomorrow. He's in my top five. Yeah. Top five of all time. Very How about funny. that, Anthony? Very funny man. Last time I saw him at Caroline's, I think that was like three or four months ago, I laughed so hard the next morning. I was like, wow, did I crack a rib last night? I couldn't figure out why. When's the... When's the baby do? Baby do? When's the baby do? Where's Brian Regan playing? Because we got to sell out that place because he's, th he's that good. Rascal? It's going to be at Rascal's tomorrow. Nice. West Orange or Oceanside? Ocean Township or uh, whatever. The Rascals will let us know. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. Go see Brian Regan tomorrow night. You will laugh your yam bag off. Yes, your yam bag will fall off. Down your pant leg and you'll kick it with your sneaker. Hey, could you'll someone be laughing so hard? Could someone tell Stoner Amy to hold on, maybe smoke a joint or something? We got oh, we're, we're organizing this rat thing and it's getting uh, more and more interesting here. So far, we got three guys that are more than willing to come down tomorrow and eat uh, rats, Anthony. Eat uh, cooked rat. Cooked rats. Um, we got a couple cooks on the line and a couple places that want to donate the rats now. Okay, let's uh, let's get this together. What do you want? What do you want first, the the cooks or the rats? Uh, rats, because uh, we're, right. we're going to do nothing unless we can get rats. Okay, Lisa. Yes. You are the owner of a pet store. Manager of a pet store. Manager of a pet store. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and you can get us rats. I can get you rats. What kind of rats? We don't want the tiny little ones. No, big, huge, gigantic rats. Big rats. How big? How big do you want? Big as our fist. Big as how as your fist? Yeah, yeah. and That's a little. Not that big. Yeah. Oh. Fist like uh, down below the uh, wrist. I'm not talking with the tail. I'm talking just their body. Yeah. As big as your fist. Oh my God! You can get them like gigantic. There's like 14, 15 foot snakes that. So you got you got huge rats. I down can there? get as big as you want. How oh, many do okay. you need? All right. Now, what kind of rats are they? Are they the, of the New York City variety? They're scary looking. They got the beady red eyes. And... Oh my god! Oh god! Oh, oh, oh the big gnarly oh. rat yeah, tail. Yeah, they're really scary. They're... You think they're good? They could garnish the plate with the rat tail, okay? Sure. That would not? be neat. Yeah, it would probably make cool because they're all bald and nasty. Yeah. All right. Now listen. Um, could we get these rats uh, for tomorrow's show? Tomorrow's show, how many do you need? Uh, three or four. Three or four big rats? Yeah. You want, like, colorful rats or you want white rats? It doesn't matter. No, we want the rats that look uh, very similar to the ones we see in the subway when we're on the platform. I think I have a couple of, like, little black and white hey. ones. Okay, yeah. Do right. you want, like, live or frozen? No, they got to be alive. Frozen? They got to be alive. How the hell are we going to kill them? Oh, that's true. Oh. I mean, if they're frozen, are they fresh? <laughs> Fresh rats? Huh. Is this flesh? Have someone to come How flesh is this? this? All right, all right, all right. I guess it's like I'm talking to the butcher about a pork chop. Is, yeah. it, is it fresh? Yeah. What's the expiration date on, yeah, on that Yeah, I mean, rat? like, they, we get in fresh, like, live ones and also frozen hmm. frozen ones that, right, like, you feed to the snake see, the when they're is, All right, now there's some ethical issues here. The killing of the rat. Now, no, they're going to be eaten, so it's okay. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. A frozen out. one might be better for you because it's already dead. But you don't know. Now, there's some been... neighborhoods, they buy their chickens alive, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't know if it's frozen and it's good enough to eat for a snake, which I think can ingest a few things that humans can't. 
as far as rancid meat goes. No, it's not yeah. rancid. We have like a big freezer we keep them in. And what I mean, are you putting them in alive? These, and they these just... rats already have their death sentence. They're going to be snake food if right. these insane people who want to eat them don't do you eat get, them. Do you get the rats frozen or do you just put them in bags and freeze them live? We get them in frozen and also we have live ones. But if you wanted them frozen, we can... How about, how about this, Anthony? A little rat electric chair, Opie? Is that what you mean? <laughs> no? Okay. Let's put I them in a microwave and watch their brains explode. Ah. No. Um, how about we have Lisa kill, yes. kill the fresh rats yeah. and bring them on ice down to the stage? Oh, God. Kill the of course you get the only pet store manager that's scared of rats, but I, I guess I could do it. All right. Hold on the line, Lisa. Okay. Hold on. All right. Okay, Lisa's on line three. And now we got another guy, Mike, that could get us the rats. Mike! Yo, what's up, fellas? How are you, Mike? Hi, I'm fine. Uh, where, where are you getting these rats from? Uh, a friend of mine owns a pet store in Queens. Okay. And, uh, you know, just like she said, they come frozen or, uh, yeah, you can get the ugly looking ones, the nasty ones, you know? I think we need, uh, for you guys to kill them and bring them over here uh, on ice for us. I, I think that. that. I think that's the best way to go about this, yeah, Anthony. Yeah, freshly killed on ice. ice. Rats. I could I could bring them with the ice pick still in their chest too, sitting in the ice. Oh no! Well, we, we don't need no to do that. Them. But no, they can't. Be, see, you can't just like whale them with 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 an ice pick. I don't know how you would go about killing them. All right. yeah, so it doesn't matter to me. Gonna meat, be, uh, I I would anyway, think you know I mean? the fastest, most efficient way is a meat cleaver to the head. To tell you the truth, on a chopping block. It sound no, it sounds brutal. But quite frankly, that's probably the most humane and uh, best for the uh, for the meat, as it were. All right. Hey, however you guys want it done, that's how I'll get them there. You uh, know what I mean? I'm willing to work with you. All right, hold on, Mike. You got it. Spaz, tell them to talk to Lisa on line three and Mike on line four to get us the rats. One more guy is willing to help us out, Dave. I want to make sure we get rats tomorrow. Yeah. A lot of people back out on this damn radio show. Dave. Yo, what's going on, boys? Great show. Thanks. You can get us rats? Dude, I can get you the biggest New York City rats you have ever seen. The nastiest, dank-looking things. Why? You work where? Well, actually, you just go into any Bell Atlantic store, and you pick out a manager, and you'll have yourself the biggest uh, rat in New York. He's making a joke, Opie. I'm not really a joke. It's what an ass. Come on. See, I knew this would. This is going to be difficult to get no, rats. I think Lisa and Mike, uh, we got some potentials there, Anthony. So now we got the people that are willing to eat the rats. Yes. It looks like we got two uh, pet store managers that are willing to supply the rats, Anthony. Okay. Now we need cooks. Cooks. We have a French chef on the line. A wee oui, wee. Oui. A guy that just uh, graduary, uh, graduated culinary uh, school. Okay. Uh, a bunch of them. Let's let's go to Steve first. We should get a a bunch of chefs down here so they could do this together, right? Yeah. Right. They uh, could, yeah. Kind of talk to each other and. Maybe it'll be like that uh, uh, that Food Network show, Ready, Set, Cook. <laughs> yeah. We can have them prepare rats in different ways. Two different cooks. Hey, Steve. What's up, guys? How are you? All right. Yourself? Good. Good. I just graduated the CIA, mm -hmm. Culinary Institute of America. Yes. I'm willing to do them. You're willing to? Yeah, we, we were taught how to slaughter, too. Oh, really? Yeah, because you got to do it clean. All right. You don't do right. it clean, forget it. They can... Develop all sorts of chemicals in their body. Mm -hmm. These guys would be like eating sushi that wasn't treated, you know? Yeah, because you can't, uh, like, break open the intestine and have that leaking on the meat and stuff. No. So it's got to be killed in a way uh, and gutted in a, in a safe fashion. Off with the head. Off with the head. All right. And you're willing to come down here tomorrow? I'll definitely. You want rat marsala? What do you want? <laughs> rat marsala? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's some mushrooms and brown sauce. A little Alfredo. Uh, rat Alfredo. Well, I don't know. I have the Alfredo sauce with rats. Let, let me ask you a question. What type of... <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, the what, idea. what type of setup do you guys have there? What uh, type of wine do you drink with rat, Opie? Well, I would think red. I would, go, I would go with a white. I'd go with ripple. I would go with a red <laughs> wine. Yeah, I'd go with some... I would think it would be more of a red wine. Uh, Cabernet. Right. Yeah. A little Cabernet action? Oh, without doubt. I guess we need a chef that could bring down, you know, um, everything. I could do it. We don't even have a stove here. You're going to need some kind of he heating apparatus. Yeah, we'll, I, we'll I could do it. I used to do catering. 
We'll make all the necessary uh, calls we have to to get the proper equipment down here. No, I have no. To go to... No, we're going to have the chefs just bring their stuff. I have oh, gas no. burners. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh man, this will rule. I right. used to do catering. Steve, I'm going to get. I'm going to invite a few chefs down so you guys could do it together, just in case someone backs out on us. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. You ever see that show on the Food Network, The Iron Chef, with the Japanese guys? Yes. Let me tell you, we should have a competition just like that. That's not a bad idea. If all you guys show up with your own equipment, that's a great idea. Then they could have a little uh, contest on who makes the best rat dish. Yeah. Absolutely. And listen. Hope if it looks and smells good, I might even enjoy some rat. You can you can garnish you can garnish with the eye. You can garnish with the eyes. Ah, oh, oh. wonderful. All right, Steve, hold on. You're you're definitely in. All right, someone has to talk to Steve. We want him down here. Hey. Steve the chef. Let's go to Scott, another chef. Hey, Scott. Yo. Do you have your own uh, equipment to cook yes, up I the do. rat and stuff? Yes, I do. Uh, any suggestions of uh, of a dish you can make with the rat? Well, yeah, you'd want to prepare it like you would a quail, but I would suggest that you go with the ones that are already frozen because uh, they've already been uh, somewhat sanitized before freezing. You're going to take a live one, you're going to cut it open, and you don't know what it's ingested before you cut it. Hmm. Yeah, but a lot of these things get rat poisoning in them, and they don't die. Oh No, no, that's why we, we need uh, rats... From uh, a pet store. From a pet store. Uh, I would suggest you go with the rats that the girl offered that were frozen, only because you're going to cut the heads off anyhow. Or if you cut the head off, then you're, it's like cutting a lobster down the middle. Yeah, but what if, what if uh, the frozen ones are still have the guts in them too? Because I think they do, because they're just meant for. Uh... Yeah, but it's going to be easier to remove all of that in a frozen state than it will in a raw state. Yeah, that's now, you're going to have a mess if you cut the head off a rat. Think about bringing a chicken. Oh, my God, studio. a freaking cod. And, and cutting the head off a chicken. Uh, I mean, you're going to have that mess. Here, you got a frozen rat with no head on it already. Does the frozen rat still have, like, the fur on it and stuff? Yeah, it's just yeah, but it's it's a gonna whole be, rat. All right, I'm fine with that. It's going to be easier to skin that once it thaws out than it will to take a live rat, cut it. All right, I'm fine I'm fine with the frozen rats as long as, there's, you know, the fur and everything's on there. But still. you don't know if it's been frozen, thawed, frozen, thawed. You know what I mean? Most of, I worked, I, I, I'm a chef at a place called the Colorado Cafe. Uh, and uh, we were associated with the Rattlesnake Ranch. I don't know if you heard about it. It's in Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Okay. But most of the, the, the rattlesnake and the boar and the stuff that we cook, all the exotics, they all come in frozen. None of that meat, none of that stuff fresh. The rattlesnake meat always comes in frozen, just to protect it from bacteria. Same thing I would say with the rat meat. Right. So, you want to remove any liability and make it somewhat even sicker than they're going to get from eating it. Right. All right. I, I'd be more than happy to come down and, and, and cook one up for you. And if, if you're fine with it, I'm fine with the frozen rats. I think I, I'm it's fine with cooking similar. up whatever you want. How do you want it? With... Hold on, hold on, Scott. What what are... flam flambe it? I think it's safer with, with the fresh rat. So you don't know how long the frozen rat's been dead. All right. Yeah, but what's the difference? It's frozen. Once it hits the temperature, you're killing all the bacteria. When something's alive and it's warm, the bacteria grows. I mean, these are just basic food principles. The guy who you talked to from the CIA would be able to tell you that, too. And, you know, the safety zone with food, anything below 40 is fine. Anything above 40 is hot enough. Yeah, I'm going with uh, All right. Well, all we need you to do is cook the rat. So why don't you hold on the line? Absolutely. We might have a competition if enough of you chefs uh, show up. You need all your own equipment. You know I that, got, right? All, I, all you need is a portable induction burner and a frying pan. All right, cool. An induction pan. All right, hold on the line. You got it. Uh, that's our second cook, uh, Scott, on line eight. Hmm. Go to George from Peter. George. Uh -oh. George. Yes. What's going on? You cannot eat rats. Rats are not to be made to be eaten. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go to Mark. Mark, you're next on WNEW. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, I'm willing to cook anything you want. Alive is the better. Anyway. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You have to have live rats. You, you have to know how to clean them up. Are you really? Very simple. Are you a French chef? Yes, I'm a, I am. Yes. Okay. I can prepare any way you want. Uh, Bring it alive. I kill it on the front of you. It's very simple. Very simple to clean. How do you do it? Very simple. You, you either break their neck so they don't move. Right. And then you skin them. It's very simple. It's like rabbits. I used to clean rabbits. Rabbits, right. Yeah. You hang I, them up. I, I or you, you, pull the, you, you cut the skin off. You, you pull the skin off. It's very simple. It's like when a glove open. It exactly. comes right off. You cut it around the top and, of the neck and, then and you the peel guts, it back. And, and the it guts right very off. simple to clean it. Also, it's just a, like a little bag. And if you don't pierce it, it's okay. Right. You, you know, don't the meat pierce any organs. Okay. 
And uh, prepare it any way you want, French style, any style you want. Oh no, we want French style, right? All right, I make it any any time, any, anything you want. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> All right, we got we need a French chef involved with this. Yeah, thing. yeah, we definitely. Like, like do. I said, live is better. All right, hold on, Mark. No problem. There goes Mark. Oh, that would be wonderful to get him down here. All right, we, uh, get is uh we're getting them all. Okay, uh, Justin, what's going on? Hello. Hey, Justin. How you doing, Opie? Good. I'm uh I'm working down here in Brooklyn at a, uh, a place called Bonsoir Caterers. I've been on my chef for 22 years. Yeah. And I'm willing to come down and cook it. I got a great recipe: lemon basil rat. Lemon basil rat. Lemon basil rat. Mmm, that, that sounds so tempting, Opie. I'll even eat it. <laughs> I'll even eat it after I cook it, just to show you that it's good. Really? Sure. All right, hold on. Okay. I think we got four chefs, Anthony. Four chefs. Mm mm. Four chefs. Now we got Joe, who's going to suggest a, a fine wine for the. Uh, I don't know what the meal. big deal is. We've all had Chinese food. <laughs> Joe. Hey, over there. How you doing, guys? Hey. Listen, guys. Uh, as far as the the proper wine, it, it really depends on which one of your chefs uh, serve it. If you're going to go with the lemon basil guy, a white I'd, wine. I'd probably recommend not just a white wine, but a light white wine yes. because you really don't want to take away from the rat. So I might go with like a Kendall Jackson Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Or, or a Fumé Blanc, something to that effect. But now let's say it was um, more uh, like a rat marsala. Okay, a rat marsala, what I would use, I would use a red, but I wouldn't use a heavy red like the Cabernet that he mentioned earlier. No. I'd probably use something with a lot of fruit in it, say like a, a Pinot Noir. Oh, brilliant. Or, or even yes. something from Australia, like a Rosemont Shiraz. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, would you like would you like to bring some uh, some wine down tomorrow? I would love to bring some wine down tomorrow. <laughs> I have a uh, I have appropriate a wine, wine. <laughs> I have a wine seminar. I got to I got to attend in the morning. Okay, for my job. All right. Um, what time are you guys planning on kicking off this dinner? Uh, we're we're gonna get the festivities going right at two o'clock tomorrow. Right at two o'clock. Yeah, I mean, well, right. I mean, uh, start and then we'll probably be dining sometime around uh, five. Yeah, around five. Five-ish, you got a deal. That's right. perfect. All right, hold on, Joe. Okay. All right, and I think we're we, set. We do need the proper wine we got, for rat. We got three guys. You got everybody, uh, Rick? It's getting confusing now. It's very confusing. Are we having a uh, rat cook-off now? Yeah. 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 It's a rat cook-off and dining, and now we have wine involved. It's going to be fabulous. Yeah, give me your list. I'll tell you where we're at. It's an event. <laughs> we got the three guys that are going to eat the rats, right? These are the three guys that are eating. We got one... Wait, who's Mike? Oh, Mike could get the rats. The rats. What happened to Lisa? She's on there. All right, Lisa could get the rats. Okay, then you got Steve the chef, Justin the chef. Did you talk to those guys yet? I talked to Steve, and Steve said Frozen is not the way to go. You might want no. to talk to him again. No, Frozen is not the way to go. Now, a yeah. bunch of uh, the cooks are saying that's the French not the way to go. got the French chef who's going to come down and snap its little neck and uh, okay. skin it and do everything that it needs to be done. Yeah, so you need to talk to Mark the French chef on line 11. You need to talk to Justin on the hotline. And you need to talk to Joe, who's going to bring down the wine. We only have three chefs. What happened to the other one? I already got the numbers. No, no you don't. Not on this list. Mike could get the rats. Lisa could get the rats. Three, four, five. Wait, where's the other two? I'm confused now. Justin and Mark, you're going to get there. Yeah, but you only have one of their phone numbers. Can they? Because that's Lisa. Right, but that's one, two, three, four, five. Four. No. Oh, just don't do this now. No, you're... <laughs> you're driving me nuts. That's why I'm trying to help you out, dude. Don't help me. You're, you're, wow. you're missing a chef. You're missing a chef. What's best? One hung up. One hung up, see? All right, so we'll have three chefs then because one hung up? That's okay. Well, right. What about what about Joe? Where's Joe? Joe's the wine guy. That's why I'm trying to help you out here. I got it all figured out. We were speaking with the wine guy. So you get his info. That's why you need to listen to me. I'm serious. I got this whole thing figured out in my head. Line eight, Joe. He's bringing down the wine. Okay. Right. Proper wine for Proper rat. Proper wine. Listen, just Fine. listen closely, because because we want this to work. We got Mark, the French chef, that you have to talk to on line eleven, and Justin, uh, the other chef on line five. Right. So now we'll we'll have three chefs. We'll have the wine. We got the guys eating it, and we got uh, two pet stores bringing down the rats. Right. We're all set. You guys should have a theme to it, you know, like set it up like a little French restaurant down there. Oh, sure. We'll have like a table with a nice tablecloth. Not a table, an upside-down garbage pail with a tablecloth. <laughs> Call it Les Rodants. <laughs> It'll be wonderful. Yeah, maybe we could get like some some uh, decor uh, expert to, yeah, to help us out. Yeah, little rats on it, you know. <laughs> Talk to Carl on line one. We got another guy that wants to eat the rats. Because uh, you know some of those guys are going to back out that we're already uh, talked to. Yeah. 
Uh, are we all set, Anthony? How about just are? like passing out samples to people walking down the street? You know how they do that sometimes? <laughs> we'll set up a table with little toothpicks and stuff and some rat and some meat and, and some cheese or something and just have people come by and give it to them on a cracker. What do you think? It's a new product. <laughs> right. People are so silly. You ever do that? Like you, you look at the mall? People will eat anything. <laughs> just some guy standing there with a dope, dopey chef hat on or something. You can hand people pieces of crap on a toothpick. They'll be like, eat and, it right up. And I'll have a side bet with you. What? You go down to the corner with the, with, uh, with a tray of rat. If yeah. you get someone to eat it, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Okay. No problem. I will do that tomorrow. We will set out a little tray. We'll put some rat aside. We'll put a wacky like chef hat on. Like I'll put the goofy chef hat on. From a restaurant in the area. Yeah. Okay. And I'll, uh, we need a platter. Okay. And we'll lay out with some Ritz crackers and some cheese and some rat meat. With toothpicks and just hand. Would you like to try a sample? Would you like to try? Guarantee, guarant effing teed. People will come up and 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 take the toothpick and shove it in their mouth, dude. If you put on a French accent in two minutes, too, you'll get a, you'll have a sample. I'm sure. Dude, I don't know how happy the Brooklyn Diner will be about us being out right outside. Hey, hey, Paul, what's going on? Hey guys, what's up? What's up? I'm just uh, sitting here getting nauseous over, over this. Oh, you're yeah. in the club. Um, <laughs> but, but, but I think that uh, you really you really can't get uh, those uh, the frozen ones. I, I don't think they're good. All right, yeah, I guess uh, we're learning from the chefs that they got to be fresh and, and alive. Yeah, because, you know, uh, they're, they're really intended for snakes and stuff like that. Exactly. Right. And, you know, you don't really know how long they've been dead and okay. all that. All right. All right. It's going down tomorrow, Paul. Thank you. Cool. Now, Billy Mack is uh, wondering if we need vegetables for this. Uh, oh, this what thing. type of vegetable would be good? Billy, <laughs> Billy Mack, what's going on? Hey, guys, how are you? Listen, you, you got everything now. You got the wine, you got the meat, you got the guys to eat it, but you need to garnish it with a little uh, vegetables like carrots and asparagus a la Madison. Oh, God, oh, <laughs> Carrots and asparagus Madison. Well, I guess, I guess Marinated that, that in her <laughs> in, internal organs. <laughs> kind of like an inside joke, you know? Yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh. If you're a faithful uh, listener of the show, you're, you're, you great. understand what Billy Mac's saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, good luck tomorrow, man. All right, thank you, Billy Mac. Glenn from West Islip recommending that we shove the rat in Rick's George Foreman grill. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be good. Okay, a lean, right. me fat. Burning, grilling, rat cooking machine. <laughs> All right, Anthony, we're going to take a break here. All right. Uh, Stoner Amy st um, standing by to talk to us. Give us uh, an update on her condition. Also, someone else that has to give an update on their condition, Stinky from this fine radio show. What the hell happened to Stinky Very, yesterday? very injured while doing our radio show, I believe. During the show. Uh, he was on the line when uh, he hung up, so we'll get him back on the line. But My arm. Yeah, it's not looking good for Stinky. He had a rough day yesterday. Very uh, injured. All right, and Aunt, uh, just so everyone's up to speed, because we're getting new listeners all the time. Yeah. This explains two. Two? <laughs> I love this. Then you'll understand every time the number two is two. set on our show that we have to scream two. We'll be back. Now, we're up to our long-distance dedication. And this one is about kids and pets and a situation that we can all understand, whether we have kids or pets or neither. It's from a man in Cincinnati, Ohio, and here's what he writes. Dear Casey, this may seem to be a strange dedication request, but I'm quite sincere, and it'll mean a lot if you play it. Recently, there was a death in our family. He was a little dog named Snuggles, but he was most certainly a part of... Let's come start again. I'm coming out of the record. Play the record, okay? Please. <clears throat> See, when you come out of those up-tempo goddamn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions. And then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but goddamn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay, I want a goddamn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a f***ing up-tempo record every time I do a goddamn death dedication. Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. This is a god, last goddamn time. I want somebody to use his f***ing brain to not come out of a goddamn record that is, uh, that, that's up-tempo, and i got to talk about a f***ing dog dying. Hi, this is Casey Kasem. American Top 40 has moved to a new time. I hope you'll join me this Saturday morning and every Saturday morning at 2. 2? What is this f***ing ponderous, man? Ponderous, f***ing ponderous. Opie and Anthony. Wow.
1027 WNEW. Hey, Anthony. Yes, Opie. The Razor Rollerboard Scooter. Oh, come on. Who's having a pisser with this thing, uh, these things in, in our own hallways? All of us now. Even you're jumping on these damn things, Anthony. Yeah, you know you're what? Left, right? I, I, I kind of, I was laying off them for a while. I'm just watching everyone zip around. It looked like so much goddamn fun I had to jump on. I found out it had a brake yesterday on the back. I never use it. <laughs> I just run right into things. People laugh at me. I, I run full speed right into walls, garbage pails, everything else. It's a pisser. Hottest new product this summer. Swear to God, driving home last night, saw five uh, people on these things. They're from kids to uh, businessmen. I swear to God. And this is the hottest new product this summer. All the magazines are writing about them. Uh, they're really, really cool. They're lightweight. They're like an inline scooter. The wheels are really, uh, you know. In inline like, skate wheels. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're cruising. Nice, smooth, compact, sleek design. It's uh, gleaming stainless steel and aluminum. They really look cool. Mm -hmm. it, looks like some, it looks like the Terminator. <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah, look at that. Rick's showing it off for the radio audience. And you see it, people? Do you see? Moron. You could, like, commute. <laughs> and if you have an easy commute, like, you yeah. know, you do a, uh, a commute where you have to walk 10 blocks or yes. well, maybe you have a, a couple block walk to the train station, uh -huh. you could scoot to the train station or to the office and then just fold it up and uh, you're good to go. Great way to attract underage chicks at the uh, junior high. <laughs> yeah. That's what Psycho Mark uses his for. He, uh, he scoots in front of the elementary schools, <laughs> giving candy to little girls. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, sleek looking and a lot of fun to ride. Uh, Sharper Image, that's the people that are uh, putting this thing out. Mm -hmm. I love the Sharper Image. When the catalog comes, I I'm like, I need that. I need that. I need everything in there. Give them a call, 1-800-344-4444. 1-800-344-4444. And, of course, you can listen to our program because we give away these things every so often. Yeah, we're going to give them away a little later on the show, matter of fact, Anthony, okay? Mm -hmm. The if, Razor Rollerboard Scooter. If you do want to win one, uh, all you have to do is visit any New York area um, Sharper Image store and fill out an entry blank. Each store will give away five Razors on Sunday, June 25th. No purchase necessary. Uh, winner need not be present, okay? Mm -hmm. It's the Razor Rollerboard Scooter from the Sharper Image. Powered by Opie and Anthony. That's right. By Infinity Broadcasting. Whatever. It's 1027-WNEW. This is New York. Our phone number, 212-757-1027. Gotta say hi to Foot. Hey, what's up? Foot's in the studio. Sure. Drop and see my pal. Sure. Uh, SDP. Love SDP. Everything all right, Rick? If the lawyers squash this idea of ours, we are not well, going to be happy. Jeremy and I were just having that conversation in the other room, and they're about to do it on the CBS TV show. And I guess, uh, you know, some other people that have worked for the company that are, have been in the service have, you know, claimed to eat rats. So hey, yeah. It's a big deal. See, that's true. CBS TV's doing it. Eh, lawyers have a way of wrecking everything. I have no confidence in lawyers whatsoever. Yeah. I don't care if they got us out of a huge jam once. I'd save us millions of dollars. They still suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The moral of the story is lawyers suck. We hate them. Uh, Ranch One today, 7th Avenue, corner of 28th Street, 430 Gorilla Boy. Jeff Norris will be there handing out the wow stickers. So if you're in the area, stop by and say hi to him, okay? All right, Aunt, we got a couple things going on right now. Uh-huh. Uh, we got Amy. From Stoner uh, Spelling Bee, we, we will talk to her, but first, really fast, we got to talk to Stinky, our own Stinky, Anthony. He didn't make it to work today. No, he didn't, and Stinky is like the best employee ever. It doesn't matter. On his days off, he comes in. Ever. You know, he will never take a day off. No, because you just, you just love this place, right, Stinky? Oh, it's the greatest. Greatest place in the world, right? Yes, it is. We're, we're supposed to be blading in the park tonight. It looks like you're not going to join us, huh? I could still play, but I'd rather not today. So, uh, let's back up. I guess, uh, you got injured doing the radio show yesterday? Yeah, right before the, uh, big Psycho Mark bit. Yeah. Very but, injured. When, when, uh, Psycho Mark was in here and we got that transvestite and, and tricked, uh, Psycho Mark really, really bad. But uh, we're gonna replay that in the five o'clock hour. Yeah. It's, it's really, really good stuff. Uh, just before that, Stinky, you decided to run down the hall as fast as you can. And try to jump over like um, uh, like a divider. Yeah, a railing. Like a railing. 
Right, Anthony? The railing's up to what? Uh, mid, mid chest? About, about stomach height. Yeah. A little higher than stomach. A little railing. Have, have you made this jump before, Stinky? Yes, I've done it before successfully. All right. So yesterday, full speed, you run down the hall. I'm trying to just get, get the visual for everyone, Anthony. I, I mean, how far is the ramp before the rail here? Like yeah, 20, 25, 25 feet? 25. So you can get a good 20, running start. 25. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a good running start. So so what happened, Stinky? Well, I was uh, quick running to get release forms for the young lady, whatever. And um, <laughs> The special and, release forms. Yeah. And there were people in the hallway where the ramp is, so I went around the other side of the railing and went to hop over it. <laughs> and as I did that, someone came out the door. So I went to stop myself, and I grabbed onto the railing. And uh, one of my my foot caught the top railing. I just did a header right over the top. <laughs> <laughs> so you did a header over the top of the railing because someone opened the door, which is right on the other side of the railing. Uh, and uh, well, what is your injury, Stinky? Well, the doctor said that I have a fracture in my forearm <laughs> toward the elbow. The uh, ulna or radius, as it were. I, I don't know. They didn't tell he me. He doesn't even know the bone that's broke. So, Stinky, you broke your arm doing our radio show yesterday. Yeah. I, I heard after you did it, all of a sudden you, you realized you couldn't write anymore and stuff. Yeah, it was hard to write. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, man. I thought I thought Spaz would be the one that would break a bone first on this show, not you. <laughs> well, remember when Spaz got hit by the car? That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> he was riding his bike, and he came in all chewed up and scabbed up and yeah. his arm in a sling or something. He had road rash all over his body. And, 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 and that's how that's how into into this job uh, Spaz is. He came to work looking like Dad. I was swerving to avoid a 14-inch U-Haul and right. cancer slide flying. <laughs> a paper. <laughs> Yeah, what? what so, Rick? so, dude, I got to see this actually happen. Yeah, I remember because on the show, like, you hear, like, Rick scream yesterday. I'm like, dude, what happened? You go, man, Stinky just had the, the most nasty He just spill. bought it because here he is. <laughs> I go, dude, before because we're about to do the segment, and you guys are just clicking on the lights. So he sees the lights go on. To him, it was like the starting gun just went off. Yeah. So he <laughs> bolts down, down the hallway. He sees the people, he decides he's going to jump it, and I watch him, and I see the leg just get caught and the door open, and his head, he just, it just went, whoo! Oh. And I was pissing in my pants. <laughs> because no, no sooner did his head and his arm slam into the floor, than he bounced back up like Pee Wee Herman and starts running back down the hall with his arms flailing yeah, to, get, to get the thing. Stink, when did you know that there was a serious problem with your arm? Um, I it felt a sprain and I I got ice <laughs> later in the day. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know. I started to uh feel I could hardly move it when I got home and I got really lightheaded and stuff. So. <laughs> did the did, did the horticulture after the show help uh help help the pain? Uh, yeah, I think it did ease the pain a little. <laughs> yes, it's good for glaucoma and fractures. I couldn't light. I couldn't use the lighter though. <laughs> You couldn't light the ball up. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Psycho Mark was there with a lighter to help. <laughs> so, so are you are you gonna have to have a cast and all that? It's one of those. No, no, there was no displacement, so oh, nice. I just have to get keep it in the sling, just so no one bumps into it and stuff. Our own Cheech and Chong. <laughs> got the right here. Well, I, I, got, I got the guy who opened the door and made you fall and break your arm on the other line. <laughs> Thank you. Anthony, the limo driver. Hey, what's oh, up, Anthony? Anthony. Sorry, guys. Hey, no problem. I was trying to get Shannon through the door, and I didn't know the code, and John was letting him in, and all of a sudden you just see him jump, and he gets thud. <laughs> <laughs> Rick is hysterical, and he just jumps right up and goes back into the back room. And I was like, you all right? He's like, oh, yeah, nothing's wrong with me. He's I'm a okay. trooper. I'm sorry, Stink. I apologize. No, I don't right. the it cause of it. St Stink, I will be representing you. Don't don't accept an apology. Oh, okay, you bastard. <laughs> Anthony makes a lot of money. Uh, you could get some good stuff. Oh, off really? Him. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, my lawyer will be calling you guys in a little while. <laughs> Stinky's own vital limousine. <laughs> <laughs> hear it now. Oh, boy. Just in time for prom season. Here he comes. Stinky limousine. <laughs> well, that's what they call it normally, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Anthony. All right, guys. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks for that huge surprise yesterday. You got it, bro. I'll see you soon. Anthony uh, supplied the uh, he, she, or whatever you want to call it. The <laughs> tranny. Oh, you, got to, you had to see, I swear to God, when she was sitting on the corner yesterday, about 20 guys were checking he or she out, and it was hysterical. I'm sorry, Yeah, Anna. going, going, whoa, what is that? Aunt and I never bought it. 
No. Uh, you never did? No, I swear. No, no. I, you could tell. You, you got to look for the Adam's apple right it's away. a guy. You could tell. And and the hands. Did you see the legs in the butter neck girl? Or whatever she is? It's a guy, Anthony. Oh, oh, oh. oh but I didn't know. She was standing in front, standing in front of Grand Central, and, and Shannon was walking around, and I'm looking, I'm saying, okay. I'm, and I see this girl in a miniskirt. I'm like, all right, she's pretty hot and everything else. And then uh, Shannon puts... Uh, uh, it's a guy. Right, right now. Bang. I didn't know that. I'm hanging up before I hang myself. Goodbye, guys. Bye. See you later. See you later. All right. We're going to replay that hey. around 5.30 or so. Hey. It's really, really funny stuff from yesterday. Well, Stinky, uh, when, it, when are you going to be back? I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> they give you good painkillers? No, actually they did. I wish they had, but yeah. I think I have some codeines left over from some other injury. You probably got uh, pot. Yeah, that, that'll help you. Plenty of pot. <laughs> All right, man. Take care of yourself. See you tomorrow. All right. Bye. There he goes. Thank you. Spaz's employee. Breaking breaking his arm over this radio show. He's quite the trooper, isn't he? Yeah. All right. Let's get to uh, Stoner Amy finally. Want to explain Stoner Amy real fast, Anthony? Uh, yeah. Stoner Amy, we were doing Stoner Spelling Bee uh, about a month or two ago, and uh, she won. Uh, the object, obviously, you get as stoned as you can, and we give you words, and you try to spell it. Smoking pot as we go along. Well, uh, we were doing it again a couple of days ago, playing Stoner Spelling Bee, and we wanted Amy to come back and try to uh, defend her title. But as uh, we were ready to start the game, Amy's mother got on the phone and got all pissed off because it seems Amy had uh, gotten out of rehab uh, that, and that day. Yeah. And we were uh, having her smoke pot for this Stoner Spelling Bee, and then they uh, searched the room and found some cocaine, and they immediately told us that what we were doing was horrible and uh, hung up and dragged Amy off to rehab once again. Well, the sister hung up because they were passing the phone around like crazy. Yeah. I asked if the sister was hot, and that's when she yeah. hung up. So now we have Amy on the phone to see what happened. Yes, let's uh, go to Amy. Stoner Amy. Hey, guys. Amy. <laughs> Whoa, you're in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. Uh, well, you sound, um... Uh... First of all, it wasn't coke. Well, that's what, what was it? That's what... It was dope. Like, what, heroin? Yes. Oh, oh wow. Snorting the H, OB. All right, so tell us exactly what happened. You could talk, obviously. Where, where are you right now? Well, right now I'm um, home, but I'm waiting any minute. My mom will be here, and uh, she says I have to leave for 16 months or... Uh, I have to leave, uh, leave home, period. So I might only have a couple minutes to talk. So you're going back into rehab? No, I'm not going to. So I'll be pretty much homeless, I guess. Oh, uh, why are you going back into rehab? Because it's for 16 months, this one. Well, so? Well, you, uh, it's obvious you, uh, you need the help, though, Amy. All right, guys, cut it out. Not you two, okay? Uh, but just to, I want to uh, tell you something. Uh, wait. Uh, no, we're, we're definitely All right, now we were just obligated to say that. I could give a flying F what you do in your life, Amy, <laughs> okay, to tell you good. the God's honest Let truth. Let me just tell you do something. Do drugs, no. kill people. I don't care. My mom came out, like, I'm sure she sounded like she was a horrible woman or whatever. Like, no, she sounded like she cared about her daughter. All right, I, I just wanted to straighten that out, you know? Yeah. No, Amy, believe me, she sounded like a mother who was kind of uh, freaking out uh, at her daughter's drug use. Yeah, that's... that's What's with the drugs? You you really like the heroin? I, I, I suppose. I haven't done any since then. What is it? Well, you had it on you the other day. I was doing it. I wound up... Having to go to uh, ER because I OD'd that night. You OD'd on heroin that night. See, if you would have played Stone and Spelling Bee, you would have just been smoking pot. God, we would we could have helped. Wait, 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 back the truck up. So after we talked to you, you OD'd that night. Uh, yeah, I kept dying because she took me to the emergency room, and I was afraid to get caught with it because then I would get more uh, drug charges and stuff from the cops. So I just. Did a couple of bags at once, and then... Oh, that's always good to do. If you can't get rid of your drugs, do it all. That's <laughs> well, a good I, thing I to do. I already have charges on me. I can't get more. Right. Amy, what? how old are you, first of all? 25. And what happened in your life that makes you want to just do drugs all the time? I don't know. What was the first time you did the dope? First time? Yeah. Yeah. The H. Horse. Horse. Smack. Smack. Um, sure. You think it's all cool and groovy with your friends to do smack. Actually, I haven't done that with anybody before. I do that by myself. Starts out with a J, a marijuana cigarette, or a joint. <laughs> when was the Cascades. First, when was the first time? <laughs> Into heroin use. I was working day watch out of narcotics. We came across Amy. 
an attractive young girl who's on the smack. So what happened? How old were you when you first started doing the H? Um, that was a couple years ago. Really? Yeah. And what? Some guy probably just came up and said, hey, do some heroin. Yeah, to get me off some other stuff. To get you off of what? <laughs> to get you off of what, Amy? Correct. To get you off a of crack, you got you on heroin. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Doesn't make much sense, I know. No. No, I hadn't done that in a and very long time. When did though. you start doing the crack? No, 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 none of that either. Well, when did you do, how old were you when you started doing crack? Uh, well, coke started at 17 and then crack was, uh, Coke? 20. So you started doing coke at like 17? Yeah. What is wrong with you? Don't you realize that stuff will kill you? <laughs> Oh, you're going to die doing drugs, Amy. Thanks. Well, you are. It's horrible. Well, but, you know, we're, we're all about the reality of everything. Yeah. Uh, what do you it think? It doesn't sound like you're even, like, giving a thought to maybe trying to get off of doing them. Your life sucks that much that, like, you got to do drugs, huh? No. Well, then what's the problem? I don't know. It just makes you feel good? Yes. It really doesn't, though, right? You kind of no. do it, and then, like, ten minutes later, you're like, oh, I got to do more? Yeah. Yeah, see? Doesn't make you feel better. It's just another problem. Jesus. But I don't care, like I said. <laughs> do all the drugs you want. You want to you want to do some H live on our show today? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a heroin spelling bee today. <laughs> Everyone get your works out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could be camping with that one, too. Amy, mm -hmm. do you have an effed up body from the, from the H? No. Hey, did you look No, I don't, I don't shoot it up. Did you look like that scene out of uh, Pulp Fiction when you snorted it? No deed? Were you bleeding out of the mouth and, no. and foaming and stuff, and then John Travolta had to stick a needle in your heart? No, but they were the, the uh, they did have to uh, shoot me up with some stuff over there. Oh, yeah? No, well, I wasn't like... You're a cool up. drug fiend. <laughs> All right, wait, I want to... I wanna, I, I definitely want to back up again. So we talked to you the other day, and then you OD'd on the heroin. Where did, did your mom find you in your room or something? Yeah. And you were just like, what, passed out? Oh, later on, you mean? Yeah, when they found you, they OD'd. And that was at the hospital. Mm. Yeah, but... See, she took me because she knew I was doing something. Oh. And at the hospital, I wound up doing it. Everything. Right, she was at the hospital and didn't want to get nabbed with the coke, so she, uh, with oh. the, the, the H, so she did it all. Oh, so where'd man. you do it in the hospital? The bathroom. Amy, sex for drugs? Shut up. What? Shut up. What did she say? What, Wait, did she... what did you say? Sex for drugs? Sex for drugs. Yeah, do you do that? No. No? Where'd you That's get messed that? up, man. She's got... <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> That's, messed up. Yeah, dude. That's messed up. I just want to know if you like a coke or an H whore. No. When you were doing the crack? No, none of never... that. Uh -uh. I, I will suck your... Mm. <laughs> dude, you guys are getting mad now. I need the crack. <laughs> man, I will suck your... Mm. You guys are getting mean now. No, right? we're just uh, going through the normal stereotypes. Of, no, that's not me. Okay. No, we have questions. We do, It's not every day we talk to a, a heroin addict. Yeah, I mean, do you have a job? I mean, where yeah, are you going? I have a job. Where are you get? So, what line of work are you in? Computers. Computers. Oh, and you're sense. using all your money to buy the dope? No, not all of it. And so now, uh, as we sit here talking to you today, you're not going to go into rehab tomorrow for 16 months. No. So you're going to get kicked out of your house, and where, Amy, are you going? I don't know yet. You don't know. Do you have any friends? Uh, not any that would have a place for me to stay. Because they've probably been run through that mill already, right? That's what Ooh, I'm mm -hmm. thinking. Like all, any friends that you've had, you've probably had a crash at their house before. No. No? No, I've never been kicked out of my home before. Well, a little reality coming in. How, why are you still living at home? You're 25. Yeah, well, Because you're doing drugs. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Oh, my God. Amy, you're a mess. You know yeah. what you're going to do? Do you look 25 or do you look like 35? No, I don't look 35. I still get proof for cigarettes and alcohol. <laughs> you, have, you have all your teeth and everything? <laughs> I, I don't look bad at all. You know what's going to happen, though? You keep doing heroin? Oh, it's, look, you age like three years for every year that you age. By the time you're like 28, 29, 30, you are going to look like a 45, 50-year-old woman and uh, do you get laid? I don't, I don't sleep around. If that's what you mean. No, I mean, do you get do you get when you want it? When I want it? Yeah. You don't. Well, I'm not in a relationship right now. You don't want sex? 
Well, I'm not in a relationship, so it's not a question. Oh. Yeah. I got an idea. Wow. She's a drug fiend, but no whore. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, do you want to play what's in uh, Amy's pants? No. I've, I've always wanted to play it with a, a crack whore. That would be fun. Oh, hey. I would say a bal hey. balloon's full of heroin, Opie. <laughs> what? No, she's not a crack whore, Opie. No, I know. She's she's into the H now. She's, so. a hero she's a heroin. Heroin addict. Why didn't you flush the uh, heroin instead of uh, ingesting it? You know, uh, I, was, I was messed up. I didn't even think about it. So you just, like, snorted it up? Yeah, I was, I was pretty much panicked. Now, Amy, you sound pretty sober today. I am. But yeah, last time we talked to you, you were really out of it. Yeah. And, you, and your mom's coming home any moment now? or mm -hmm. What Who? time? Uh, she got out at 4, so she should be here any minute. Who sells you your uh, heroin? It was uh, somebody at my job. Yeah? At your job? Yeah. Wow. So, what, like a co-worker? Yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> heroin in the computer industry. <laughs> An expose on the Opie and Anthony show. She says it's so matter-of-factly, well, yeah, we yeah. boot up heroin, we boot up discs, you know? <laughs> yeah. You got to boot up the operating system, and then we boot up some H. <laughs> Interesting. Man, Amy, we're gonna we're gonna be wondering about you now. Amy, you sound like you're really on the road to self destruction. I got to be honest with you. Now, now, don't don't mistake this for me giving a, a crap. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it really sounds that way. Yeah, I know. Like, and I'm sure you hear that from everybody. Blah blah blah. But uh, do you see it that way? Yeah. You do. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to do anything about it, or no, you I can't do. do. I just don't want to leave home. And well, I don't want to be in, like, this place for 16 months. Well, you know something? It might be the best thing for you. 16 months. Like, it's mean, like a vacation. What? They make you make your bed. They make you go to these meetings. And you, you meet a lot of people that if at the, at the end of 16 months you don't uh, feel like doing it, you met new people to get drugs from. The people are awful that you meet. All uh, right. Well, they're drug addicts, Amy. Yeah, but yeah, if, man. you're not going to the cotillion. If they want to put you away for 16 months, that, I mean, don't you understand that that means you have a pretty serious problem at this point? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you have a pretty just I mean from on the outside, just from the limited info we have, it really sounds like uh you uh you you're effed up. You're gonna break your mama's heart. Yeah. You'll probably end up dead is what it it's gonna happen, like relatively soon. Yeah, can we have a contest, uh have the listeners guess when you when you O D? Yeah, can we have your sister call us when you die so we can uh, have a contest? All right, you're probably going to get a nasty call because that's, that's a messed up thing to say. Well, that's, Amy, <laughs> what? that's reality, though. If you, if you don't go get uh, help soon, what do you think's going to happen to you? You're going to be dead. You're going to, like, OD, and no one's going to be there to help you, and they're just going to find you covered in green vomit, all blue. You your might, hair you will don't, be messed you don't up. No we, we might as well, or anything. You just pass out. We that's might as well it. capitalize on it if you're going to, you know, if you don't care about your life. Yeah, we can give away some pretty cool prizes. We're like vultures over here. Yeah, we see a carcass yeah. and we just start pecking at it. I see that. Yeah. You're going to be poor you're like homeless soon. You're like our poor man's Dana Plato. <laughs> can we have that? Hey, you know, instead of the motorhome, you could put her in a wild van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to live in a wild van until you OD? Amy? Amy, we feel like we know you now. That's why, you know... I'm not going to lie. I'm a little concerned. Mm -hmm. Rehab is for quitters. Thank you, uh, Joe, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> Flying <eight. laughs> Jesus Christ. That old gag. She's no quitter, Amy. Got to give her that. <laughs> oh, yeah. she, she sticks right through it. That's cool. Well, no, I didn't say I don't plan on not doing it anymore. Well, you'll do heroin again. Think? Yeah, because you're not uh, going into any program or anything. Oh, no, no, no. That's not true. Yeah, I tried bargaining with my mom to tell her that I'll do an outpatient, but she said no because of last. Wait, time. wait, all right, and I understand why she said no because let's back up again. A couple of days ago, when you called to play Stoner Spelling Bee, right? Mm -hmm. Is it true you got uh, out of rehab that day? Yeah. And is it also true that they found dope on you that day? <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. I rest my case. How long were you in rehab? Before? Uh, it was twenty-one days. It was a terrible place, though. 21 days. I've been in rehabs before. That was not a normal rehab. It was a terrible rehab. What was wrong with it? It was bad. It had it, no, no meetings, drugs, no groups, no nothing. You, all you did was wander around. Horrible. All you did was walk around. <laughs> really? Wander around looking for no, drugs. So now good, maybe, maybe listen, listen, if you go into a long-term rehab program, you won't have heroin on you the day you get out. That's what uh, they're probably uh, thinking. 
You know, because it, you'll probably just fall, especially if you don't have a home now. That's the best thing. Uh, uh, somebody who's doing heroin trying to kick it, and uh, now they're homeless. You might want to pick out a nice shopping cart. All right, um, nice corner to sit Yeah, on. you'll be hooking. And I, I'm no, not, I won't be. Uh, and we got to take a break. I'm not ready to let uh, Amy go. we, we yeah. got to talk to you a little more before you make your decision, okay? No, if I hang up, that's just because I had no choice. That's because your mom... Uh, yeah, she came in or whatever. We'll get to you as quickly as possible. Right. Just run through spots and uh, yeah, stay we, on the line. We'll have Rick monitor the line. If, if something crazy is going on, we'll break right into commercials, okay? Bye. All right, stay right there. It's about as funny as a sinking school bus. I have a strong stomach. You guys made me blow chunks. Oh, great. The grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, and they my two new favorite whores. You guys are really horrible. Hopefully you have them today. What a couple of ass wipes. 1027. W-N-E-W. All right, Anthony, the Diamond Exchange. Yes, yes, the Diamond Exchange. Uh, best place to go for uh, diamond jewelry, Opie. Route 17 North in Paramus, New Jersey. For over uh, 12 years, the Diamond Exchange has been the tri-state area's premier source for diamonds and fine jewelry. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, let's say uh, yeah, in, you want to you wanna get a nice piece of uh, diamond jewelry to hawk to buy some heroin. I like tying it into the last break we did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Diamond Exchange staff will help you choose from an exciting collection of loose diamonds and the most beautiful, unique, and custom design engagement mountings you'll ever see if you feel like getting engaged. And maybe Amy's free. You might want to hook up with that. Do, do, that wouldn't be too much of a chore. Does the Diamond Exchange buy old uh, unwanted jewelry? Or, I, I would, or jewelry that has been stolen for drug purposes? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Give them a call to find out. All right, they'll be able to answer that question for all you dope fiends out there. Yeah, all the jewelry designed and handmade on the premises. We've seen a lot of their uh, pieces in the catalog they sent us. Beautiful stuff. I think any lady would like getting this for uh, any any occasion. The showcase are packed with the very latest in jewelry designed from contemporary. 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 The classic. The platinum. Call Diamond Exchange today. Ask them to send you a free catalog. 1-800-550-0633. 1-800-550-0633. These bastards in the Razor scooters, man. The Diamond Exchange. Oh, there's a crash. Okay, sorry. Route 17 North in Paramus, New Jersey. Come see for yourself why their customers return again and again. Diamond Exchange. And Go back to Stoner Amy. Amy. I'm not. You're not stoned? No, I'm nothing like that. When was the last time you were uh, stoned? Monday. Monday? Monday. All right. That was it. All right, if you're just tuning in, this is uh, Amy from Stoner Spelling Bee. Uh, um, the whole scene a couple days ago, Amy's mom picked up the phone as we were trying to get uh, Amy to smoke pot on our show. Turns out Amy was in rehab that day, got out of rehab that day, and was found with uh, heroin. With heroin. Oh, and so now um, her mom has given her an ultimatum, 16-month uh, rehab, or she get gets out. thrown out of the house. Tough love. And Amy has decided to not go to rehab. Right, Amy? Right. All right a lot of people want to talk to you. Wow. I wonder, what, like, why? You're just going to hit the streets then. I don't know. I've uh, never been on the streets before, so I don't know. Well, maybe you ought to go to the rehab, maybe. Just for the roof over your head. Let's go to uh, Bevan. Yes. Hi, Bevan. Hi, how are you? Bevan? Yes. What's that, a Beverly Kevin thing? <laughs> Do you have, like, uh, female junk and male junk? No. Okay. Bevan. Bevan, what do, you, what do you have for Stoner Amy? I'd like to get on the bat. That's how long before she ODs. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, we were, we're thinking that maybe we could have a contest. If, if Amy doesn't care about her life, why should we? So we would yeah. give out a prize if you guess when when Amy uh, ODs. Well, I give her four months. Four months tops, huh? Yeah. Well, if she'll be out on the street. Yeah, so that's going to put some miles on her pretty quick. Yeah. Maybe that'll scare her straight. I think pretty much. Amy, you think you could last four months on the street? Don't know. Don't know. you got to hook up with a good pimp. <laughs> that'll, exactly. Uh, that'll put you out on the street and you could get some uh, get some cash for banging or something. All right, let's go to Steve. Hey, Steve. Steve. Yeah. 
You're a professional uh, psychologist? A uh, psychotherapist, psychotherapist with a specialty in addiction. Okay, uh, Stoner Amy's on the line with you. Uh, Amy, um, now you're using your best judgment right now. Why don't you take the suggestion of the people around you? Uh, you can always leave this uh, long-term rehab if it doesn't work out. Ah. And go where? I'll be two hours away somewhere in upstate. If you were two hours away from heroin right now, you'd be able to find it if you had to. What's the problem with leaving a place that's two hours away if you don't want to be there? Oh, that's some You're good obviously... psycho stuff there. You wow. that well, why go in the first place? That was fancy. I know I'm not going to like it. If you were two hours away from heroin, you'd find a way. Amy, you're not supposed to like rehab. Yeah. It's, it's not Disney hab, it's you not, know? It's not, <laughs> summer, it's not summer camp. Yeah, that, all right. If you keep on doing what you've always done, you keep on getting what you've always gotten. What, what makes you think that things are going to turn out any differently if you don't change them this time around? I don't know. I don't know. The psycho babble is not working for me right now. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, Amy, your own thinking is what's not working for you right now. Ah. Hmm. Amy, you know what it is? Everyone, uh, Everyone's pretty much right, but I could see your point uh, on this whole thing. You don't care what anyone thinks. You're just... It's not that. It's I don't want to go to a 16-month program. I, don't many... th okay, I think you've put yourself in a position where you don't have a choice. How many rehabs have you been in, Amy? I don't know. Uh, four? Four. Well, it's... What do you think is going to work for Amy? Well, you, you need to look at the possibility of a compromise. Um... She doesn't want to go to 16-month program. Okay, that's understandable. A lot of people who don't have the ability to stay sober but a few days are not going to commit to 16 months. What's what's a decent compromise? There are plenty of good programs in Florida that I could probably hook her up with off the air, and I'd be willing to do so for no charge. Uh, that are that are a very happy medium in the area of six months. Some of them are in Boca Raton. They're very nice. Oh, imagine that! Oh, oh, oh. Not nice Florida. What do you think? Amy? My insurance isn't covering anything else. I have four days left to lay insurance. Sorry. I work for I work for an insurance company right now. Believe me, I know how they work. I know how to negotiate them. I can help you with that. Mm, this might be a guy to talk to. Maybe if that was six months. St uh, Steve, would you do this for free, or would you want uh, Amy to give you a Hummer? Uh, what's uh, what's <laughs> the, uh, no, then we'll just on that one then. What's, no. what's the deal here, Steve? You're I would well just well, a concerned operating. listener trying to help a, a fellow listener. Not that I have anything against Hummers, but uh, while <laughs> operating in a professional capacity, that would be contraindicated via my ethics. Sure, right, of course. I just do it because, you know, she's obviously a friend of the show. You guys are obviously a big asset for the mental health of the greater tri-state area. Yes, we do try. I'd be giving just a little bit back from where I've gotten. Okay. Amy, you would uh, d uh, d uh, think about six months instead of 16? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, very good. All right, Steve, hold on the line. Okay. Let me get Steve's uh, info. We got to make sure he's. Yeah, we'll give it to Amy. We'll give it to Amy. Let's go to Jay. Jay, you're a next. very special Opie and Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Opie and Anthony, the intervention, <laughs> with a starring Amy. <laughs> Stoner Amy comes back in her most challenging role yet on the Opie and Anthony show as the heroin addicted girl. Opie and Anthony, the two biggest hypocrite asswipes <laughs> on the face of the earth, turn face. And and try to be good guys and get Amy off the H. Uh, Amy? And on to their Johnsons. A Quinn Martin production. Yeah. <laughs> Mom's not home yet, huh? No. Okay, uh, you're on the line with Jay, an ex-drug addict. Jay. Yeah, how you doing, guys? All right. Amy, listen. Jay, you, you, want, buy some, you want to buy some Coke, man? <laughs> yeah, right. No, Amy, listen, what you need to do is get yourself to social services and get into the drug and uh, alcohol social counseling. services. That's what you need to do. That's what I did, and it worked for me. And you also have to dump all the people that get you involved in that. Yeah. Ah, that's the deal. That's right. the way to do it, and it's not easy. But once you do it, you'll be better off for it. And it's the people that you hang out with that bring you down. Ah, keep putting yourself in that situation, yeah. and you're ne never going to get out of it. And that's just the way it's going to go. Do your friends but, uh, all, Amy? Hmm? Do your friends all like do heroin and no. stuff? No, no. no? Well, what the hell are you doing? Hmm? You mean you don't hang out with the fast crowd? No. The drug-doing crowd? No. Doesn't sound like you have many friends, though. No. You got the guy at work that sells you your drugs, right? You get the guy at work that sells you your drugs, and then you got... I have a couple friends, but they basically just drink and stuff. Oh. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what are they, pussies? 
<laughs> they don't want to do some heroin with you? All right, let's uh, do the horse fags. We're getting every angle of this issue today, Anthony. Jack's on line 11, and he could give an F about Stoner Amy. Jack. Yeah, dude, it's not Jack. It's Lewis. Oh, no. Hey, listen, Amy, pay close attention here. You're calling the two nastiest bastards in radio who generally don't give a rat's ass about anybody, and they're trying to help you. Speaking of rat ass, <laughs> speaking of uh, rat asses, uh, good segue, Opie. Yeah, wait, wait for tomorrow. Thank you. Jack, get dining on that. Lewis, go ahead. I mean, you can ask O&A what a nasty a-hole I am, how I rip spazzy blunder a new a-hole every day just for the fun of it. I'm telling you, Amy, no one is going to help you other than yourself. If you don't care about your life, I'm being totally serious now. If you don't care enough about your own life to help yourself, there's nothing anybody's going to do to help you. And if you're reaching out for help, then you know what? you got to open your ears and close your yap. And you got to do what is necessary to get yourself off of this. And if you don't want to do that, or if you think 16 months is too long to save maybe another 70 years of your life, then you know what? There's a nice bunch of bridges all along New York City. Pick one and do the swan dive. Woo! Yeah, job! Yeah. No, really. We'll be I back mean, with more Sally Jesse <laughs> right. after this. <laughs> when when Amy will be confronted by a drill sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> really? you know, They're like the old Geraldo show. They you know, we even have our own personal drug counselor. Yeah. After we Dude. exploit the guests, we uh, get them help. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. Dude, this crap pisses me off, I'll tell you why. Because if an ass wipe like Spaz with a loser <laughs> life like he has can just keep going every day and coming to work and making an effort to make the show funny, even though he's the biggest douchebag walking. <laughs> this woman, I, I, this this girl, this this dit, I, I cannot comprehend for the life of me why the hell she's wasting our time when we could be doing something interesting like shaking girls' boobs on the radio. All right, Lois. <laughs> Thank you, Lois. True. Oh, God. There goes Lois. Yeah, we're just about done with this. Uh, Jay, you're the last call, I guess. Jay? Yeah, hi, how you doing? What's uh, up, ONA? How you been? Right. Anyways, listen, Amy, just to let you know, I mean, basically, I'm going to give you like three months, because drug is basically bad news. And let me tell you something, you don't want to mess around with drugs. I've seen people in the hospital, I've sat with people who are on drugs in the hospital, and it's not a pleasant sight, and they really want to try to help you. And the only best advice I can tell you is, I'm telling you, get off the drugs, so that's no way to go. I mean, it's 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 really bad news. I mean, and God forbid if you get caught with drugs, it's, it's, you know, almost basically a criminal offense. She hasn't said anything in, like, the past three phone calls. I think she's uh, OD'd. Yeah. Amy, you, of the bed. Amy, you're still there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, Amy. Whoa, I mean, like no, I said, shut up, Jay. Amy. Amy. Yeah. You uh, still there? Yeah, I'd like to say the caller from before. Yeah. Oh, he really told me, didn't he? <laughs> wow. uh, he's a big pot shot, huh? This is the type of attitude she probably gives the people at the rehab center. I know, at her mom. Yeah, I don't know what you tell me. I'll do my drugs. I can handle it. Right. Right, Amy? You're like a tough well, I cookie. I never said I was still doing the stuff. You yeah. will, though. You were, you were, you were doing it two day, three days ago. Three days ago. Yeah, don't get... Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think you're... Uh... <laughs> Amy, are you like a spoiled brat? Come from a rich family or any of that stuff? No, uh, not really rich, but my mom spoiled me. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. Where's your dad? Oh, no, I got her. Sorry. Amy, mm. where's your dad? New York somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, really? You don't know? Is he a drug no, addict? exactly where he is. Is he a drug addict? No. No? No? no. Just left mommy? Huh? He just left mommy? Just left you guys? Uh, I don't really know exactly. Wow. You're, uh, you're, not, you're not allowed to talk uh, okay. about daddy in the house? No, I just don't care to. There's an issue. Yeah, there's one. No, it's issues. not an issue. He no. calls here sometimes. No, believe me, it's an issue. I, yeah, that's an issue. Yeah. Mm. It's really not. Uh, no, Amy, it's, it is. <laughs> All right, Amy, we're going to let you go for now. <laughs> All right, guys, good, because I just saw my mom pull up. Wait, uh, what? wait we uh, want to uh, talk to your mom. No. No, I'm serious. Listen, i I, I, I got to find out what's going on. So. Right, well, uh, so do we. Yeah. We need some closure here. All right, well, maybe if you let uh, my ex-boyfriend Billy through, he might be able to fill you in. Why Billy? Because he knows what's going on and stuff, and he listens to your show every day. Okay, let's talk to Billy. Are you, uh, you got his number? You gonna keep in touch with us? No matter if you're homeless or in rehab? Hey, what do you want me to do? Call you collect? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could call yeah, me. I don't care. Okay. We, we need the Stoner Amy, uh, updates. Alright, well, I gave the guy, whoever was answering the phone, Bill's number, so. 
All right, now, Amy, mm -hmm. what are the odds of you going into rehab tomorrow? <laughs> Zero. Ugh. Pretty she's, small. She's not going. No? No. Is your, listen, is your, listen. Is your mom getting in the house right now? She's going to be any minute. Any second? She's parking the car right now, so I'm going to go. All right, guys? All right. It was nice talking to you. Well, stay in touch. Let, it, let us know if you die. All right, I, I will. Okay. Bye. There she goes. Stonery, heroin addicted. Amy. Uh, all right. Cool. This is like uh, Maury. Maury. <laughs> that did a lot of good. And next guest, Amy. Doing drugs. We'll talk to her and then try to get her help. <laughs> like we care. All right. Hey, let's, uh, let's. I mean, it's such a, it's so ridiculous. Let's change directions. <laughs> Jessica. Hey, what's up? How you doing? All right. Uh, listen, I was wondering if maybe you could change the contest. Yeah. Uh, you can change it to, uh, which, which happens first, Amy ODs or you guys get syndicated? <laughs> Amy ODs. Yeah. Do you think so? Oh, yeah. Three months? Yeah, tops. Cool. O and A. All right, Jessica. The best. All right, bye. bye. And we gotta take a break. Yes, we will continue with Loveline after this. <laughs> Loveline? It sounds like, you know, you know, when they get the drug yeah. checks, they call up sometimes and they feign like they care. All right, we got an update on our rat thing that we're doing tomorrow. Yeah. We got Adam Ferrara in the studio. We Adam got foot in. We got foot in the studio. All right. We'll talk to those guys next, okay? Cool. Also, coming up in a little while, uh, the Psycho Mark prank from yesterday. It's definitely worth a replay. A lot of people talking about that today. Yeah, pretty funny. So, lots to come on the ONA show. Stay there. Hello? <laughs> Yeah, I thought I'd uh, check a little intelligence for this conversation here. That yeah. has no place on this show. <laughs> I know that. Colty and Anthony. More stupidity on the way. 1027 WNEW. Hey, Anthony, a lot of instant feedback coming in here. Uh, Rich from the city about Stoner Amy. Uh, for rehabs, tell her mom to submit her dental records to the police. Save the cops a little time when they find the body. Oh, a teenage kid in Jersey. I learned it from watching Amy, okay? <laughs> All right, Anthony, Mujan. Ah, this is what Amy should be doing instead of drugs. Waxing her snee. <laughs> right? I guess. That's a good hobby. Use uh, Mujan. Mujan. For uh, ladies, waxing is the difference between having itchy, scratchy stubble. Ew. And silkier, sexier legs. Adam, Adam Ferrara's just dying. We gotta get him in on That's this. That's like kissing a wino. <laughs> oh, did you ever think you'd see the day where your pal would be uh, doing a live read for uh, a wax product? Waxing. Mujan. Mujan. It sounds like a small Asian man. Just the world. Mujan. The world's most desirable women wax with the convenience, one step, a botanical formula of Mujan, Opie. <laughs> yeah. Come here, we trim hedge. <laughs> Mujan <laughs> wax. Can be used hot or cold and is the most comfortable oh. one to remove hair, whether on legs, face, ew, or underarms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something tells me if you got that hairy mug, I don't know. But hey, use a Mujan. <laughs> no unpleasant odors or chemicals from the Mujan, you know. If you start out that way, <laughs> Mujan isn't going to help you out yeah. there. It's gentle, hypoallergenic Mujan. It removes hair completely, Opie. Uh, it's slow to grow back. Hair is lighter and thinner. Skin is softer and sexier than before. <laughs> Guys, get your ladies Mujan wax today and check them out in their uh, briefiest bikini. Briefiest <laughs> two or, or most revealing uh, <laughs> summer dress tomorrow. See? They could wax uh, today and not have all that stubble and red rash. Oh, sometimes it just looks like someone slapped uh, her in the lap with a piece of chopped meat. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that. Mujan. The most desirable women remove hair from the world's most desirable women. What? The world's most desirable way. Help me. Oh, Mujan's available at Wayne Reed. Oh, you. In the most desirable place. <laughs> yeah. The most desirable way to remove hair from the most desirable women's desirable place. Mujan, available at Wayne Reed. Harmon Cosmetics, Genevieve's Drugs, and Cosmetics Plus. If you don't see Mujan, ask your store manager to bring it in for you. That's what you want to do. Store manager, where's the gash wax? <laughs> oh, the Mujan. It's right over here. Yes. Please pass the Mujan. <laughs> do you have any Mujan? Thank you. All right, Mujan. 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 All the Powered by Opie and Anthony. All new 
by Infinity Broadcasting. This is 1027 WNEW New York. All right, we're back. 212-757-1027 is our number if you have anything for the show today. Hanging with Foot! Yeah! And Adam Ferrar today, of course. Hello. Are you guys plugging things? Sure. Let's get sure. some plugs out of the way. Foot? Sure. First, I will be at the brokerage tomorrow night, Friday, and the next night, Saturday, with the guys from Air 6. So call up and make your reservations now. Very good. And Adam Farrar taping something for uh, Comedy Central. I will be uh, doing my one-man show at PS122. What? 50. <laughs> Wait a minute. i got to read it off the it's card. It's career day. Wait You're a at a school? <laughs> no. PS stands for pers- performance space, Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just talking about like a school. It is a school. It's career it's day. PS122, PS performance space 122. What is that? I don't know. I didn't build a theater. PS is public school. Oh, okay, I agree with you. <laughs> so you're performance on... space. It says performance <laughs> space 122. No, it's PS122. That's a school. Don't, don't blame me. Cool. Adam's, Adam's going to be a Christmas. PS122. Where's the man? They're going to they're push the bye bye birdie set to the side so you can do your set. <laughs> I'll be playing an abscess tooth in the dental hygiene play. PS1122. PS122. Right after Oklahoma leaves yeah. the stage. Right. Remember, winter parking. Right after Powder Puff, uh, Adam Farrar will be performing. What, are you, I'm gonna go to front the what is that? It's performance space 122. No, it's a school. <laughs> no, PS122 is a school. <laughs> no, it's not. There's a PS for public storage. He's going to be playing with the couch. Public storage. <laughs> public storage. Yeah, I'm in him with the bodies from the serial killer. <laughs> Yeah, in front of, in front of. You are you sure that's a place? <laughs> hey, look, that's what the Toyota Comedy Festival told me. You're and here what is this it? night. Is it a club? What is it? It's a source of embarrassment whenever <laughs> I tell you stuff like this. Is it a club? No, it's a theater. A theater. Did you hook, hook up with someone from the internet and they're telling you to go to PS122 tonight? You got a barrel your right. size. <laughs> <laughs> PS122. 122. It's got a size. Okay. Yeah, right? That's great. Right. You after... want the rest of the address? No, where are you shooting your next thing? John Glenn High School? <laughs> no, that's a theater. It's not a high school. It says high school, but it's just to throw the people off so they don't show up. Next week I'll be on the circle line. <laughs> yeah. I'll be performing behind that big steel grate that used to shut the hallways down <laughs> at night. <laughs> PS122, but at it the, ain't a school. I'll be at the VFW Hall, the Sons of Italy dinner. I'll be at John's Deli. It's a hospital. <laughs> Are you the entertainment for a prom? And you're not telling us. We wouldn't no. do that, would you? <laughs> you <didn't know laughs> like you think it, no. Like maybe, I, no. <laughs> no. No, okay. All right, PS122, performance space 122. <laughs> performance space? <laughs> That's what they told me. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna, who's on first? A naked chick juggling candlesticks and a tutu? <laughs> performance space one twenty two. Performance space one twenty two. Better a fifty one. Better known <laughs> as uh, the the front of uh, Trump Towers. <laughs> <laughs> as my There's only one explanation for white tile in a dressing room. He's gonna pull up. He's gonna be an Olive Garden. That's what it is. My school called its theater the auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> Mark from Staten Island. <laughs> TJ, the rat scare. Hey, uh, hey, hey, TJ. Adam Farrar was coming to my school. Get out of here. Yeah. You go to PS122? Uh, no, I just live nearby. I've seen it around. So is, is it a school? Uh, I think so. I've, I've seen <laughs> PS120 something. Uh, PS122 is a converted school that now houses theaters. It okay. does? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I read them as I see them. Hour, uh, I don't know. Terry on line three wants to know if they'll be serving hot lunches during your performance. <laughs> <laughs> It's the, it's the prep for the SATs. <laughs> All right, so that's tomorrow and Saturday? Tomorrow and Saturday, uh, 8 o'clock, and it's on the corner of First Avenue and Nice Street. We're actually giving away tickets. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, put your number two pencils together <laughs> for Adam Ferrara. <laughs> that's funny. Don't turn the page till he's done. Why don't we give some tickets out now? How many you got? I got uh, We got some here, too. What'd they, what'd they send over? Saturday. We gave away Friday. Already. We gave away. All right, we got uh, tickets. Give away five more pairs for Friday. Really? Yeah. All right. We got uh, five pairs of tickets to see Adam Ferrar tomorrow night at PS122. Bring a bag lunch and a permission slip. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll explain where it is. Uh, we'll take the the next five callers for the sat- uh, for the Friday night show. Excuse me. Friday night at 212-757-1027. Oh, look at that. I'm on the PS122 website. <laughs> Are you really? Performance Space 122. There it is. 
All right. Ongoing performances. And if you can't get tickets for that, you can always come to the brokerage and see Joe Curry on Friday <laughs> or Saturday night. You whore. <laughs> <laughs> you whore. Dueling plugs. Don't. All right. Um, Anthony, I got some great news. Wow. Yeah. Adam uh, joined the festivities late. Mm -hmm. Check out what we're doing tomorrow, Adam. This is sick. What, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, have you been watching the CBS Survivor show yet? No, I just sort of great show. Uh, we found out that next week they're going to be eating uh, rats on the show. Rats. So why wait till next Wednesday to see it on TV when we could do it on the show tomorrow? Look at the little gleam <laughs> in his eye. <laughs> Isn't that great? So listen, we got three or four guys that will come down here. They will eat rats. We got four chefs that right. are going to prepare the rats. Wow. How does one prepare a rat? Well, we're going to have like rat marsala, we decided, right? Rat marsala and some type of lemon. Lemon. Uh, lemon. Rat moulin. Oh, a rat moulin. <laughs> we have a, we have a, a French chef, uh, com, coming in to prefer, French chef! To prepare one of the rats. Uh huh. And then we got a, um, a professional wine guy that's going to come in with some wine that tastes good with rat. <laughs> Look at this rat and cream! Gut and wash a fat rat without removing its head. Cover them in a pot with ethyl alcohol and marinade <laughs> for two hours. Cut a piece of salt pork into small dices. Hey. And cook slowly to extract the fat. Drain the rat. Dredge them thoroughly in a mixture of flour, pepper, and salt and fry them in the rendered rat fat for about five minutes. Wow. People actually have recipes. Yeah. And, or rat. And the chefs will be preparing it tomorrow. And they get to choose. We're getting the rats from uh, a pet store, like the big, big, ass, fat, big ass, ugly, like city sewer rat type like, things. Uh, Four or five pounders. Ew. Big fat rats. And we got guys that will eat rat live They'll on eat the show them. tomorrow. Not only that, we're going to uh, take some rat. No. Maybe a little oh, cheese yeah, about and a Ritz cracker. Me and I'll be have a hundred dollar bet. Right. If I put a goddamn chef's hat on right. and, and some whites right. and stand out in front of this building uh -huh. with a platter with rat meat, cheese, and a Ritz cracker, right. I guarantee you some schmuck will take it and put it in his mouth oh and my eat God. it. Because people just do. You walk through the mall, you see some guy. You want to try some of <laughs> and, and people are like, oh, I'll try some of that, and they pop it in their mouth. Not knowing what it is at all. Uh, that's a rat. Well, are you going to tell him it's rat? I'll call it something else. We'll get the French word for rat. Okay. And I'll say some, you know, uh, raton, whatever they call rat. Le rat. Know. What's rat in French, uh, Opie? Uh, Jerry Lewis. <laughs> Jerry Lewis. <laughs> El rat. That's Le L rat. Le rat. Hell is Spanish. I don't know. Le rat. On a Ritz cracker, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Everything tastes better when it sits on a Ritz. <laughs> hey, Barney, put a... Put a rat on that, Chris Brett's crack. Leave him in. Um, yeah. Anthony, Rick's in the back room. He's making sure this is going to happen because a lot of these things fall apart on us. That's yeah. why we're overbooking this. we got four chefs coming down, four guys to eat, a couple people to bring the rats. We need Brian the Eater from earlier to call in and Steve the Chef to call us. We want to make mm -hmm. sure you guys are uh, legit and, and we'll confirm for tomorrow, okay? Yes. And if there's any other people out there willing to eat rat, give us a call. You guys can have your own theme, uh, theme restaurant, ONA's Rat Shack. Does it look like a dumpster? Uh, janitor from New York checking in. I can't believe Joe Curry is in a real comedy club and Adam is in a place where he gets served by ladies in hairnets. In the <laughs> room. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Must uh, have something to do with the sun, Anthony. Maybe that's it. The sun is exploding. The sun is, is the ex sun exploding. Doesn't anyone? You know, this. I would think this would be the top story. You, yeah. It seems Opie. That uh, there's been some bizarre, huge solar activity on the sun. Right. I saw it on the CNN uh, website. <clears throat> uh, the the uh, sun has ejected massive bursts of charged particles, a billion, like billions of tons of charged particles, and where are they headed? Toward Earth. PS-122. Right. <laughs> Public storage 122. <laughs> uh, headed toward Earth. Headed right towards Earth. Really? So That's how, what it oh, says. Wait a minute. How, how many of them? How big? Huge. Uh, they, they said t uh, tons and tons of solar particles are, are traveling at uh, you know, millions of miles per hour and will reach Earth by uh, sometime around sundown tonight and continue for a couple of days bombarding the Earth. 
What does that mean to you and I? Ann? Well, I'm trying to get some info here. It says the Earth's natural the electro. Why we pushed off? Yeah, <laughs> the rats will cook themselves on the sidewalk along with us from yeah, solar you know, particles. We'll all just yeah. be cooked. But they're never really right. Remember Skylab? Run! Yeah. There's a fire truck gonna hit you in the head. <laughs> it's coming out of the sky. Yeah, but who who wasn't paranoid and kept looking up, wondering if yeah. they were gonna yeah. be the the, 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 the the sap that get gets hit by Skylab will yeah. end up coming down in Australia, didn't it? Uh, but the Earth's natural electromagnetic magnetic field, Opie, shields the planet from uh, most harmful effects. But, they put a button there. But some adverse consequences may occur. What does that mean? I don't know. We're going to lose the Nashville network. Yeah, well, they'll probably <laughs> screw up your cable TV. They do say spacecraft may experience surface charging. So anyone flying around in your spacecraft out there, please pull over to the side until this passes. Well, Those of you with shuttle tickets, you're going to be delayed. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Well, we all do have our Jetsons uh, cars. It's the year 2000. So there's something to worry about, Anthony. What about uh, what about planes and aircraft? Anything? Uh, I don't know. They're not giving me any info. I think they're afraid. It's best we. It's not a know. conspiracy, isn't it? So maybe no. I shouldn't skate in the park tonight. No, I don't know. It, it's just a bunch of particles. And they say yeah. that the, the aurora it's borealis... It's just a bunch of particles. That's what the people in Hiroshima said. <laughs> it's just a bunch of just particles. A, my guy, it's Muran! Muran! Hey, Muran! Muran! Muran. Uh, yeah, and uh, they say that the um, northern lights, the aurora borealis, yeah. Opie, yeah. Uh, could be visible as far south as Washington, D.C. now. Very nice. Because of these things. So be on the lookout that for that cool. as you fry your retinas looking up at the sky, <laughs> even at night. The last for, thing uh, you ever see. Yeah, for all we know, this could be what wiped out the dinosaurs. I have no <laughs> clue. No one's giving me information. I'm looking at a, a picture, at a film on the website, the CNN.com website, of the sun that looks like it we're just doomed. <laughs> it looks like it's exploding in, in front of your this, eyes. Is this the sun or the uh, clip of the Death Star blowing up in Star Wars. I I dare you Look to that. tell me the difference. That's the backdrop from a Doors video. Coronal. <laughs> Look at it. Coronal mass ejection recorded by the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. That looks like my colon at the Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen a shot of the sun like this. It's, it's blue. Yeah, it, and the whole thing is exploding. It looks like that special effects they used in the 70s uh, for music videos. Oh, yeah, yeah like the like, groovy like uh, overhead projector with some oil and water. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that the, kind of thing. Actually, this is when the Wizard of Oz got pissed. Stay away from that man <laughs> behind the... Or it looks like the burner we're going to be using tomorrow to cook the rats. Yeah, it looks like if you're looking down on a stove on a burner, and then it blew up. Mm -hmm. If it just exploded on you. Where did they get... Where did they get it? From yeah. space, Adam. <laughs> That's where it's the a picture is. from. Can you believe that? Sp yeah, yeah. That's where you know, actually, this was done in a Disney you... studio <laughs> with blue screen photography. That's not the sun. That's goofy. Maybe the dinosaur's face like the deer drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> AJ. Hello? You want in tomorrow? You want to eat some rat? Yeah. We might need an extra guy. Where are you calling from? Um, Ken. And how, Ken. how old are you? 18. Is that legal enough, uh, old enough to eat rat in? I don't know. What, 18, what? I don't know, maybe 21. You can have the rat, you just can't have the wine. Yeah, I think you might have. Yeah, that's true. And you're going to need the wine. All right, AJ, I think we're going to have to pass. I think we got to go 21 and older just to cover, right. cover our asses. All right. Thanks, man. Chuck saying cell phones, jets, satellite, uh, TV reception will be affected. And uh, it will look like a red aurora borealis. You know what really burns my ass? A what? solar flare eight million miles long. Mm. <laughs> What's Spaz's take on this sun thing? <laughs> I think if we clone the sun, we'll have another one, Enough. and we won't oh. need that one. Go Last ahead. time the sun flared up like this, half of Canada lost its power. Remember that? What was that? Eighty nine or something like that? About yeah, yeah. about Canada. Mm -hmm. Let's get and uh, let's get Spaz in here. We're not doing Spaz. It, we're not doing his week in review. Tomorrow, Maybe Spaz so. can explain this. Spaz. Spaz. Yeah. Oh, Professor Spaz. Could, could you explain what's going on with the solar flares on the sun? Have you heard about this? No. See, there's solar. <laughs> oh my God! Look at his face. <laughs> He's so foggy and bewildered. Looks look like he just look, ate look at this. Look at this uh, picture. This is a picture of the sun. This is what it did yesterday. See that? So all these, <laughs> all these particles, billions of tons of atomic particles, solar particles, are heading 
towards Earth, and they're going to hit Earth tonight. Tonight, in, in a at couple sundown, hours. and last for a couple of days. We're going to be bombarded by these uh, these uh, particles. Don't look good. They're coming toward us at a million uh, miles an hour. And and we've had some emails. People want your take on this since you've done such a good job uh, explaining a uh, giant mosquitoes, a cancerous live wires, and how uh, to clone uh, how to clone uh, oil. 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 There's a problem only you can solve. Yes. So Spaz, what's your take We're on this? We're waiting. What for can you. we expect? Won't be uh, won't be affected. We will not be affected. We will not be affected. Why? Because the coldness of space will will crystallize the particles, <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll re burn up when it reaches the Earth's atmosphere, and just converting it to another form of maybe liquid or gaseous state. <laughs> well, I feel better now. <laughs> so basically, it's just going to rain. Is that the coldness saying? of space. The cold now space. I'm thinking that. Uh, these particles, you know, made up of X-rays and things like that, aren't really affected by temperature uh, of space. I'm thinking they just hurtle through the cosmos heading towards us, and temperature has nothing to so, do with what they do. So cold particles aren't as uh, dangerous as warm particles? No, because when it, when it hardens up, it turns into another state and thus giving it, you know, another identity. And then when it goes into the Earth's atmosphere, it's another... Why don't we put you in a freezer and get you a new identity? You're not particles, you're an imposter. <laughs> the particles are actually Clark Kent. That's it. That happened. Where were those other particles? I just stepped away for a minute. <laughs> the state, it turns into Jersey. So, so you're saying we're okay because of the coldness of space. But don't you think that the sun is pretty warm? Yes. Right. Okay, so now the sun's rays can hit us. And it's still pretty warm out when the sun hits us. So yeah. why doesn't the sun rays freeze on the way down here? <laughs> oh no, because see, right, when something is blasted off from its original origin, right? Okay, it might. It, it looks like a ray, but it's really right. like you no, can no, 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 no. maybe a really, really hot liquid form. Okay, well, what, what, so what, the not, sunlight is heated liquid. Yeah, it's, it's a hot liquid. You can maybe turn it, yeah, because it, right, you're talking about the sun. The sun is a rock, basically a very heated rock. What? Okay. And so when particles what? blast off from the heat from a rock, see, it's rock. So oh, no, rock, no, no, the sun isn't rock. It, the sun rock. of your head is a rock. <laughs> <laughs> he must have heard that when he was a kid. His father saying, my son's head is like a rock. <laughs> and then he interpreted as the sun is a rock. <laughs> but, <laughs> my, son, my, my son's son head is, is made of rock. Oh, the the sun is rock. No, the sun is a big thing of just it's gas. gas. It's just it's burning gas. gas. Yeah. It's a crap load of hydrogen, and it's just burning like a big nuclear a furnace in space. But that can be turned into really, really hot liquid, which could turn, which it will raise as interpreted as in that area of space, and then thus, when coming into space, it burns <laughs> up. He uses the word thus, thus, thus to sound thus, more intelligent. To thus, water. Oh, I love it. I you love gotta it. love this. Thus, thus. He, he oh. meant to say this. He just screwed it up. <laughs> no, he uses thus to sound more intelligent. He's usually like three right, or four listen, times. So wait a minute. The sun, uh, the sun is a rock. The it's sun's a, a rock. rock. It's, it's a, a very rock. heated rock. rock. You don't want. Don't touch the rock. <laughs> it's very That's heated. Hot. Burn yourself. So why would liquid come out of a hot rock? Well, because when it's blasted off, see, when something heats, it pressurizes. Okay. Thus. Yeah. Right. Thus. Ergo. Yeah. So <laughs> it. it, it <laughs> It might yeah. it, the pressure builds up, so it's something's got to pop. No, these are particles. Yeah. These are like atomic particles, mm -hmm. See, like supercharged nuclear uh, matter. I'm glad it's, you brought that particles. up. Particles. <laughs> I'm very glad you brought that up <laughs> okay. because furthermore, yeah. Wait. When I see and when I back in science class in, in the old days when I was in school, <laughs> when you used to suck on the gas from the Bunsen burner. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. See. It happens that, see, there are electrons, neutrons, and protons within your body. Mm -hmm. So it's, you treat the, all right, it's, all right, let me do it like an explanation here. <laughs> treat the, all right, let's just say in a comparison to sun to a human being. Human being has protons, electrons, and neutrons. Right. Yeah. So basically, if, one, if some of those electrons bounce into each other, uh -huh. you can have an atomic explosion with your body and self-implode. <laughs> Same thing is happening with the sun. When is, when is that going to happen to you? <laughs> so same thing oh can happen to the sun. God. It could be a self implosion with the electrons. So, so we have to worry tonight about the particles 
hitting our body mm -hmm. and causing a, an atomic reaction and our, uh, Inside people our body blowing up. So anyone on a bumpy train ride home. Yeah, look out for exploding people tonight. Now, first of all, the particles never reach us because of my explanation from before. But if they do, <laughs> as per <laughs> his explanation, please see <laughs> paragraph <laughs> two. See, refer to two. illustration E. Okay, so we won't, we won't have to worry about the particles hitting us, because, but if they did... But if they did, it would land on us most likely in a liquid form, thus getting seeping into thus. our pores. <laughs> seeping into our pores. Oh, seeping and into it, our pores? And, and, if, and if, like, I guess, a, two <laughs> same like, like charge, protons and neutrons, so it's just two pluses smash into each other, <laughs> it could something to self implode. Oh, my God. The sun is composed of helium and hydrogen, you tool. It's made of gas, like the crap between your ears. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stupefied. Yeah, well, thank you for that explanation. As per Spaz, mm -hmm. whereas his explanation, Air 2, uh, yeah, thus, before, thus we will not have to worry because they turn to liquid and freeze in space. Wow. But you do have to worry about those three uh, criminals from Krypton stuck in that square thing, <laughs> getting blasted out and giving Superman a really hard time tonight. Explain in, uh, that one, Spaz. <laughs> Thank you, Spaz. <laughs> Doctor Spaz, once again explaining stuff. Don't worry, no, no, uh, we can re re we can review tomorrow with Spaz. So. Spaz Einstein. Um, Anthony, we got to take a break. Please. We got the Psycho Mark prank from yesterday. If you missed it, if you missed it yesterday, stick around. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we'll, we we'll explain this. the whole thing right after uh, right after we take a break. <laughs> and as we go to break, uh, someone that's going to be in the studio tomorrow with us, Anthony, a very very funny comedian, Brian Regan. Yeah, oh, he's funny. I believe he has some audio of um, Spaz. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen Hawking just fell out of his wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> After after uh, Spaz explaining this whole uh, science thing, yeah. here, here's Brian Regan, a, cool. bit, a bit called Stupid in School, and he'll be live in studio tomorrow. Kofi and Anthony. <laughs> the big yellow one is the sun. It's the sun. <laughs> and the big it's blowing yellow on. one is the sun, and it's a rock. What's going on with the sun? It's exploding. It's a big blob of crap that's been burning for a few billion years. Really? Who's to say it won't just go... All right, cut it out. Any, at any given moment. I'm getting those freaking out. <laughs> Did you see falling. the picture of that solar flare up thing? It looked like the whole surface of the sun just left it for a minute. Don't mm -hmm. look good. What if it doesn't, like, relight? All right, cut it out. You ever see, like, when the barbecue goes, like, it burns out and then all of a sudden it goes, and comes back again? Yeah. What if it just goes, and doesn't come back? Uh, someone get Amy. I can't handle reality right now. You're freaking we'll out. We'll have to shoot a rocket into the sun. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, I like my space being about about six inches from my body. I don't like thinking about anything too cosmic. Opie freaks out at this uh, stuff. Uh, he is. He's freaking. Doesn't like it. Stop your crazy talk. Doesn't like the whole concept of endless space and the sun and the planets just kind of spinning around it for a few billion. Who's to say it just uh, tomorrow? <laughs> it ends tomorrow. The sun just goes. Oh. Why do we take for granted that it'll just be there tomorrow? Oh, cut it out. And there'll be plenty of time for us to just freeze to death. <laughs> Don't worry, Opie. Uh, Anthony, I'm sure the ensuing uh, anarchy before everyone dies will clear out about half the population of people just being killed and raped. <laughs> and then the rest of them will just freeze to death. Uh, Anthony, um, yeah, great segue here. End of days on pay-per-view. Ah, look at that. <laughs> End of days. I've come to save you, Opie. <laughs> this is great. End of days. Sir. Has, has anyone seen End of Days? we got to talk about for 60 seconds. I haven't even seen the movie. Yeah. No. Donald yeah. Schwarzenegger, Kevin Pollack. It is a, a, a instill a genuine fear of the unknown into the masses. What? Story takes the audience on a whirlwind ride from Vatican City to New York sordid Times Square. <laughs> While touching on present day topics that has engrossed the world, the end of the millennium. The sun is a rock. The sun is a big rock <laughs> in end of days. And it's hurling liquid, frozen liquid at us. Let's go to your paws. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of things. Doomsayers predict, uh, they predicted the uh, Y2K breakdowns, planetary alignments, and destruction of the Earth by earthquakes, meteor showers, and a solar flare, Zopi. Oh, wow. The rest of the world lays in wait, unsure of the future, thus setting the stage for end of days. 
Come see my movie in the days. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Kevin Pollack. <laughs> In End of Days. All right, that's a minute. End of Days. Today on Time Warner Home Theater. Comcast in demand. Order it now. And Cablevision pay per view. Movies made to order. Check out End of Days and make these people happy, please. please. please I beg Hello. You. What is it going to take for us to pitch you off to the point where you're going to change the station? That's what I need to know. Shove it. Anthony. Boy, it sure is easy to be a fag on this show, isn't it? That's going to be trouble. And then we just received a PhD in stupidity. 1027. WNEW. Okay. Yes, Anthony. Because of the uh, solar flares. I'm going to try to see if uh, it works like the movie Frequency. You see that one? Where he was able to uh, talk back in time with uh, his dead father. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to try to contact myself on a CB and tell me, uh, tell myself not to uh, go out with Dreamweaver. <laughs> not to. Uh, I'll just write the whole thing off. Very nice. Breaker, breaker. Maybe we could get in touch with Diamond Dust tonight. Yeah. Or The Wrangler. Yeah. April, help me out here. Hi, guys. Hi. This is April. Um, I wanted to join your party tomorrow. You want to eat rats? Uh, yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah, wow. you guys eat a girl. Will you, will you eat the rats naked? Naked? What? Uh, like eating rats aren't bad enough. Well, yeah, naked uh, is fine, I guess. Whoa. As long as they're cooked. No, I mean you naked. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think that. Oh, I don't think so. No. All right. Uh, do we need a girl to come down to eat some rats? All right. Yeah. Do we? Yeah, we would like a girl down okay. here to eat some rat. Why not, man? Okay. All right. Hold on the line. Rick will talk to you. Okay. It is shaping up to be a fine day tomorrow, Anthony. Yes. Brian yeah. Regan in studio and people eating rats. <laughs> All right. You want to play the Psycho Mark thing uh, from yesterday? Yeah, I, I got to hear this again. Okay. Uh, Adam didn't hear that. I didn't yet. hear it. Foot didn't. Uh, Foot heard this. I heard it. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you want to play along at home, there's uh, plenty of pictures from this from this wonderful prank from yesterday's show, Anthony. Yes. On FoundryMusic.com, F-O-U-N-D-R-Y Music.com. Mm -hmm. Basically, the premise, because uh, we're going to pick it up when um, Psycho Mark is uh, duct taped to the chair here. Yeah. Basically, this girl, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, called in and said she wanted to meet Psycho Mark. Oh, now Adam's... Adam's now. Okay. <laughs> you, figured oh, it you got out. it now? I got it now. <laughs> so uh, this girl calls in uh, and says, hey, I think Psycho Mark's hot, blah, blah, blah. I want to meet him. Uh, Psycho Mark has this reputation with women and harassing him and stuff. So we, we tricked Psycho Mark by saying, look, we'll let you meet this uh, girl that sounds hot on the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't want this uh, to be used against me someday. <laughs> um so we said, Psycho Mark, you can meet her if we're allowed to duct tape you to the chair so you don't, like, harass her. Mm -hmm. That's how we got him. Okay. So he couldn't move. Then uh, Anna came in. Anna? Yeah, Anna. And uh, messed with uh, Psycho Mark. And then, uh, boy, look at the shock on Psycho Mark's face when he finds out that it was a guy. <laughs> Psycho Mark buries himself in this prank, though. Yeah. Oh, you'll hear how hot he thought she was. So I guess we pick it up, Anthony, in studio with Psycho Mark in the corner, duct taped to a chair, waiting for this, this quote, fan to come in to meet Psycho Mark. We got him really good yesterday. Pictures, foundrymusic.com. You know, check out the pictures as uh, the audio plays. Okay? All right. We'll be back in a little bit. Obi and Anthony. <laughs> oh, those guys are fast! 1027 WNEW. Hey, Anthony! Oh, well, well, Mujan, Anthony, well, Mujan, Mujan. Yes, yes. Come on, how many times do we have to tell you people? The way to remove hair from around your genitals is with Mujan. And uh, anywhere else you have hair. What, your face? Uh, like your shoulders? Legs? Your back, armpits? Or, or whatever, whatever you need uh, removed. Everywhere you have hair. And if you want it to grow back uh, thinner and lighter than ever, use Mujan. Not shaving. Oh, it ends up looking like oh my god! You know, Forget about it. You know, I I I got I got to state the obvious, Anthony. What? No one else will. Go ahead. Why the hell are we talking about a, a wax removal thing? Man? Because uh, we, we like uh, ladies that are well waxed. You don't want to go to well the beach kept. and see things poking out the side of a bikini like a Larry Fine's head from so, the Three Stooges. Yeah. So are we experts at this? Or I mean, what's our angle? Being a guy, I believe we are experts in looking at female crotches. Okay. 
especially at the beach in bikinis. Right. And you can spot a well-kept one. Right. Okay. Yeah, if you have see... company, you straighten up the front room. It's only polite. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you, if you see a bikini and there's hair bushy out the side, mm -hmm. you get turned off, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, likewise, if you see, uh, uh, whereas, if you see... <laughs> Hair too. Thus, 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 if you see a bikini <laughs> and there isn't hair, but there is razor stubble and razor burn, and it's all red and rashy. Yeah, you don't want your cheeks getting all rashy. No, no, no. It looks no. like somebody threw a London broil on the barbershop floor. <laughs> you, you don't want it to look like that. All right. Mujan removes the hair, Opie. I believe we are qualified to speak about that. I'm assuming it's an easy thing. You get a little very uh, easy little container of this stuff. You can put mm -hmm. it on hot or cold, rip it off. Your hair's gone, nice and smooth. Blah blah yes. blah. Right? I have an applicator in my pants. Mm -hmm. If any uh, then girls you, need you tuck that, tuck the rest of it under and you dance for Psycho Mark. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Hyperallergenic uh, removes hair completely. No unpleasant odors or chemicals to irritate your skin, and uh, it leaves any a region you want to remove hair from feeling smooth and silky. Wouldn't the logical thing be to, like, do it live on the air to a chick? Why don't we do that? All right. If you want to get Mujan, yeah, give us a call. Mujan, the most desirable way to remove hair for the world's most desirable women, Anthony. Yeah. Mujan is available at Dwayne Reed, Harmon Cosmetics, Genevieve's Drugs, and Cosmetics Plus. And if you don't see Mujan, just ask your store manager to bring it in for you. <laughs> Mujan. <laughs> Fran is 84 years old. Rick, you cannot have oral sex with Fran. I'm sorry. No, anal is okay. Train Rex Radio. The OB and Anthony Show. 1027 WNEW. 212-757-1027. Hanging out with Foot and Adam Ferrar today. Yeah. Rock. We are rocking. Tomorrow's another big day on the O&A show. Brian Regan coming in. Very funny guy. You'll laugh your yam bag off tomorrow. I promise you that. And uh, we have a bunch of our listeners eating eating rats on our show tomorrow, Anthony. We're going to have to get the spaz cam hooked up for that tomorrow. Real rats, man. We're going to cook them up. We have a couple of chefs coming down, and they're going to do uh, quite a job cooking these things. Yeah. We're going to uh, have some, I think, marsala, and then uh, some rat in a lemon sauce. Cajun rat. People are going to eat this. People are going to eat rats on our and I'm going, to, I'm going to try to get some people to eat some rat samples on the street. I'm going to have a goofy chef hat on and some whites and the big platter. Would you like to try some samples of some uh, raton? We'll, we'll get plenty of video. Rat tattooey. Yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have still shots of the whole thing. Rat yeah. and the spaz cam. So, so you'll be able to check out what yeah, we're checking. Yeah, a lot of fun. A yeah. lot of fun. Uh, Anthony, your favorite entertainer has um, has made it out of the hospital after bleeding for a week from his ass. Was Adam Ferrara bleeding from the ass? <laughs> he is all patched my up, favorite, and he'll uh... be at PS 122 <laughs> <laughs> in a diaper. Yeah, Bob Hope is. Uh, yeah. A lot of people thought he was checking uh, checking yeah. out, but he surprised everyone. He was, yeah. he was released yesterday morning, I guess. Well, when you saw the uh, pictures of him in the paper and everything, and the tabloids have been reporting that he's ready to drop dead any minute. All his friends are dead. You know, Bing and Jimmy Stewart and all the people from Lindbergh. Old Hollywood. Lindbergh. Lindbergh. Jesus. Lincoln. They're all dead. And uh, it looked like this was uh, the final curtain. For an old sea slope knows himself. What was it that caused the bleeding, did they say? I, I ate something. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Here's a sample. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, would you like some ratioli? Yeah. Yeah, give me some of that rat. I need to get some solids down in there. <laughs> there we go. So, Bob, that's a, that's a gas. Now, when that gas hits the cold air, does it change to a liquid form? <laughs> yeah. It's like a solar particles or something. Ah, there goes some now. So your ass is basically a hot rock. Is that what you're telling us? <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not dead yet. You can't count out old Bob. No, he's hanging in there at 97. He's like yeah, a dodge dart. Still alive. <laughs> dodge dart. No matter what you do. <laughs> yeah. Laying in the hospital, I saw uh, saw Bing and everybody else in the light. Sammy Davis Jr. over in uh, Colored Heaven. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what? Yes. Oh, dig, dig, Hey, dig. come on. <laughs> come on, it is heaven, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> A little blue humor. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I also saw that fag, uh, Peter Lawford. Remember him? He was part of the Rat Pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, was, he was giving uh, Sammy some skull. <laughs> what? Yeah, Sammy was singing Candyman while he popped his eye out and let Peter Lawford get in there. <laughs> What, what about Brooke Shields? Ah, she's hot, huh? Yeah. How about that Brooke Shields? Yeah. I liked her when she was nine. <laughs> really? On all my uh, CBS specials I used to do. Yeah. And when I was over at Vietnam, boy, my ass looked like Da Nang. <laughs> I got to tell you. Wait. 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 Napalm. Hey, Dolores, you want to clean that up? <laughs> My wife of 78,000 years, Dolores. <laughs> Gotta love her. She stuck by me. Yeah. What a tool. <laughs> if she would have left earlier, she could have gotten money and spent it before she was a living fossil. <laughs> now she's probably going to drop dead right after me. Which could be as soon as a week. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so he'll, he'll be with us uh, a lot longer. At least another he, week. He went quick. Like, he went down the slide pretty quick. Because it seems like only a few years back he was still making some kind of appearances. Oof. Swinging a golf club. Yeah. I still play golf with Ronald Reagan. Yeah, in the kitchen. Every he week. Swinging a golf club. <laughs> we play one hole 18 times. <laughs> Brand new to us, every hole. That old gag. <laughs> How many times are you going to make me say that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wonderful. So, yeah, so Godspeed, Bob Hope. Godspeed to you. Hanging in there. Mm. Also, Old red eyes. Also, uh, we're doing a little mop up here. We got to talk about uh, other things in the news, Anthony. The uh, the serial killer. You guys have any thoughts on the serial killer and the oh, five gallon, gallon drums? Go figure. He sure didn't fit the profile of a serial killer. What was the profile? A uh, big goofy guy uh, mm -hmm. got the girls through the internet, and uh, they came up and. Uh, and boy, how do you treat a lady? You, you cut her up and put her in a fifty-five gallon drum. <laughs> well, what, is what you do. What was the guy's name? Robinson was like. So, it was something like that. Yeah, Jack Robinson. Like so, something. like Edward G. Robinson. Yeah. Man, man. Man, see, okay, Rocky, take the boys and sit on the house. Man. Oh, well, you got it wrong. If you put the girls in the drums, you can clone them. <laughs> well, it's, it's a way of making fuel. <laughs> Fossil fuel. Fossil fuel. 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 Yeah, they, Un unleaded women. They got a picture of him in the paper, and it just, I mean. They should have picked this guy up just on the way he looked. Oh, he's got that pedophile gleam in his eye. Yeah. It? Does he have the, uh, the the three first names, Anthony? Yeah, he's got a middle name. He got, he's got that wacky serial killer uh, middle Not name. Not like John Wayne Gacy, the fun clown uh, serial killer. Boy, a big fat guy that dressed as a clown for the children. Boy, you wouldn't suspect him as being a child-touching uh, maniac. Person killer. Bunch of fags buried in his basement. They're still digging him up. They're still digging him up. I know. Like they filled up his basement, and then they said, "Why don't we break up his patio and see if there's st stuff under there?" Oh, guess what they found? More, More dead homosexuals, <laughs> dressed like a clown, and people right up until they killed him were 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 uh, were writing to him to get his paintings because he went into painting in prison. Oh, yes, he did. There's a happy little tree. <laughs> I'm just gonna paint because it's our world. And look what's buried under that tree: a homosexual. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, right here, I'm going to dip into this uh, this skin tone and just paint a nice nine-year-old boy buttocks right here. Because it's your world. You put that penis anywhere you want. Here's the guy dancing for Psycho Mark. Now, yeah. Like this. Here it is. Now, I'm just going to I'm just gonna stick my stuff in this Lizarin crimson and, and blot it all over the canvas. Because that's human blood. A lot of that was around my house. Because I dressed like a clown. What, were the police stupid? How long did it take him to find me? <laughs> it rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Yeah, I sure hope they don't check my house. <laughs> yeah, I like dressing as a clown. Most likely to be a serial killer. Shelby Louis Anderson! <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be exposed as a big puffy fag that I am, so I've, I've resorted to killing the people that I seduce with cash and booze because God knows I can't get with a body of mine. Uh, well, they're, they're up to six bodies and still yeah. counting. Dressed like a clown. They were all found in oil drums? Uh, five. Show me manners! Five so far. I've tried to turn murder into comedy. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, hey, we're getting lots of requests for the serial killer song. Yeah. We only play this when there's a serial killer that's like been caught or on the loose like, there. I like anything that has food in it. Cereal, whatever. Show me Captain Crunch! Show me Captain Crunch! Show me Pudding! <laughs> Show me Bunghole! <laughs> well, let's play this, and we'll be back to play What Did We Learn on the ONA Show today. <laughs> Very educational. <laughs> Made quite a splash, I hacked and I slashed my way to the top of page one. The cops even checked, but they didn't suspect I was carving up fellers for fun. Guess I never thought I'd finally get caught. I hope that they all rest in peace. Cause I'm locked away, what more can I say, except what I told the police. Oh, I got friends in crawl spaces, I got arms and legs, and a few faces stashed all around. In different parts of town, well I met them in bars on a friend. Basis. Now I got them in jars and flower vases. Oh, I got friends in all spaces. I know I was wrong. I just don't belong. I guess you've heard that one before. But the guys, they all dig me. I'm like Eleanor Rigby. There's a face in a jar by my door. Must be insane, got an abnormal brain. What else could I do to get laid? The guys that I date had a terrible fate. They ended up lightly sauteed. Oh, I got friends in crawl spaces, every shape and size, and all races, all blood and guts. And I be nuts. Well, I got one that'll really kill ya. I'm the poster child for necrophilia. Oh, I got friends in all spaces. Well, I got friends in all spaces. I'm the that made Milwaukee famous. Oh, I got friends in all spaces. You want a little dose of honesty? You find it here on the Opie and Anthony Show. I got a couple of idiots. <laughs> Filthy, disgusting, greasy idiots. 1027 Anthony, Time Out New York, weekend almost upon us. Time Out New York is the obsessive guide to impulsive entertainment. What are you going to do? Walk around uh, Manhattan with your head up in the air or up somewhere else going, what do we do? What do we do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. You end up in some theme restaurant. You end up at the NRA Cafe in <laughs> Times Square. <laughs> Blowing up a few rounds. Give me the Magnum Burger. <laughs> now, you want to do something cool, something fun, something New York. Get Time Out New York. It's available at newsstands everywhere. Jumps right out at you. This issue chock full of information to get you ready for the summer, including a rundown of the best garden courtyard and rooftop restaurants, a complete pull-out calendar of Central Park Summer Stage concert schedule, and a roundup of sample sales for stocking up on summer clothes. I can get some, some clothes. clothes. we got to replay that. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, time out in New York. You pick it up. It's, it's, it's got thousands of things to do in New York. Find out which 55-gallon drum best holds a corpse. <laughs> oh, wait. No, that's not a no, that time out no, New York. No, no. But uh, pick it up uh, for a subscription. Give them a call. 1-888-GET-T-O-N-Y. Get Time Out New York, the obsessive guide to impulsive entertainment. Get it and get out. <laughs> uh, this is your announcer, Hugh Mungusbecker, saying, Opie, 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 Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. We're obnoxious little assholes. 
97.7 WNEW. The Opie and Larry Brilliante Show. <laughs> Didn't I want to be referred to as Larry Brilliante? Yes, you did, Anthony. We only have a few minutes left today. Don and Mike broadcasting live from New York. They're up next at 7. But quick plug before we get into what we learned today. Yeah, I got some tickets to give away. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, I'm keeping them away right this second. Okay. You'll F us up so horrendously <laughs> bad. It's well, not even funny. Then I will stop right here. But give your plug, and then we'll end the show. Maybe I will be at Brokerage with the Air Sick Guys this weekend behind Paul Bond Friday and Saturday. All right, and of course, our, our pal Adam Ferrar in yes, the studio, too. Adam. I will be playing a barbecue. <laughs> a rat barbecue. A rat, rat barbecue. Are you, are you coming by for the rat barbecue? tomorrow. Uh, what time is it? Uh, it'll be all day tomorrow. It's during our show. We got Brian Regan and we got uh, people eating rats. It's going to be another great O&A show. Yeah, what do you know? <laughs> well, you got nothing to do. I got a couple. I'm not eating anything. No, no, you won't eat no rat. You'll be by, though. Right, we'll get a burger or something. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now look what you did to Mark. You strapped him down. Nah, we won't even feed you, rat. Okay. You're coming by tomorrow? What are you doing? Yeah, if I get out of rehearsal, I'll come Oh, down. you're rehearsing oh, for oh, your TV oh, show? Unless I get snapped. Or for what? If I have to stay after class. What are you rehearsing for? <laughs> the show tomorrow night. Oh, for the show tomorrow night. Yeah, He's taping for Comedy rehearsal. Central. Exactly You're taping for Comedy Central. Tomorrow night at PS at school. At the school. <laughs> PS 122. <laughs> Performance Space 122. 122. Right at the study hall. And where is that located? It is at 151st Avenue, corner of 9th Street. Where? Here in Manhattan? Right here in Manhattan. Very nice. All right. And the phone number for tickets is 212-477-5288. Two shows. One show Friday at 8, Saturday at 8. And this will be a broadcast on uh, Comedy Central? Comedy Central. Comedy Central. Down, down, the, down the road, yeah. We'll play it. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw Lewis Black's uh, Comedy Central. It was, was really funny. funny. It was yeah. really funny. He's out of his mind. Funny. Lewis Proud to Lewis if he's listening to today. Hey, Anthony, time to play What Did We Learn on the ONA Show? Uh, nothing. Uh, no, there's a ton of crap coming oh, up. Very enough. educational program today. This might, might as well be Channel 13. Let me read through show. a few of these real fast. Patrick from Jersey, what I learned today is that even 25-year-old women that are addicted to drugs still have morals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was no whore. Freud mm -hmm. from Jersey, what I learned, Spaz uses the word thus to make himself sound smarter. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned Opie wasn't the only guy in the studio with boobs yesterday. Easy. <laughs> uh, let's see what I learned on the O and A show today. Bummy from Manhattan. A successful prank of a cast member on Wednesday equals video games with your buddies during the five o'clock hour on Thursday. <laughs> hey, wow, that's pretty good. Actually, it's scooter racers. Scooter racers today. <laughs> down the hall, yeah, and beating up huge giant cardboard cutouts of the Yankees. <laughs> I don't know where that came into play, but I just saw Don Zimmer racing down the hallway on a scooter, yeah. and Psycho Mark punched him in the nuts, and then started uh, having anal sex with the cardboard cutout. Of El Duque. It was a funny thing. <laughs> All while he was on a scooter. <laughs> All on a scooter. It was moving. All on the Razor scooter. Our own version of Rollerball. <laughs> yeah, Rollerballs. Uh, Jim from Jersey. Today I learned that Bob Hope will outlive uh, Stoner Amy. What I learned. <laughs> Rat, the other white meat. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah. find out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. People eating rats tomorrow. Make sure you tune in. Rob from Brooklyn. I learned that after Adam Ferrara finishes his set tomorrow, he could carpool the kids home. Uh, Vinny from the city. I learned that Sammy Davis, Red Fox, and Will Chamberlain are in colored heaven. <laughs> oh. uh, let's see what else we got. Yikes. All right, let's go to Joel. Joel, what did you learn on the show today? Hey, yeah, I learned that today Spaz could be a scientist. Yes, scientist Spaz explaining uh, the solar rays from the sun, yes. And that's all you get from Spaz this week. No Spaz Week in review tomorrow. We're going to be too busy. All right, syndication when Spaz is actually a scientist. All right, thank you, Joel. Sal so learned that the sun is a big, hot rock. <laughs> yeah. From Spaz. Steve, what did you learn? What's up, guys? I learned two things. And the first thing I learned, that Amy is the poor man's Dana Plato. Yeah. <laughs> and the second thing, no matter how I no matter how outdated it gets, Anthony loves saying, survivors. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Take care, guys. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Joe from Queens today, I learned that Stinky will soon own his own limousine company called Stinky Limos. Uh, Joe from Jersey, I learned Psycho Mark likes tucked in man junk. Mm, seemed that way. Uh, I learned that you didn't watch the Britney Spears Hawaii special. We did. We forgot to talk about that today. Britney. Mm. It was very, very uh, good last night. They kept cutting, though, to eight-year-olds dancing in the audience, and it ruined the spanking potential of... Uh, the Britney uh, special. Right. All right. I think we're just about done here. A little, uh, little anal from Britney would have been a, a good part of the special. <laughs> she offered up some anal. Yeah, that's going to happen. Maybe it's just me. 
<laughs> uh, Kelly from New York City. Syndication when Psycho Mark willingly touches some dude's tool. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, never mind. <laughs> oh, no. uh, Matt, what did you learn today? Hey, guys. What's up? Hey. I learned two things. Number one, 55-gallon drums are not just for spazzes uh, genetically, and genetically altered oil. Very mm -hmm. good. The second is uh, somewhat of a reference. I also learned since QVC is only selling the one-time use Brittany, that is the proper, proper way to dispose of her. Okay, terrific. <laughs> we always take two, 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 too many calls. Ponderous. All right, uh, Foot wants to give away his tickets. Yeah, I'll be giving tic Hi. tickets away for the show. Giving uh, ten, ten sets of four packs of tickets. <laughs> Ten sets of four <laughs> packs. That's a four pack. Wait a minute, isn't that forty tickets? <laughs> ten four packs of tickets. I'm, I'm a stupid. Ten four packs. <laughs> Wait, that's forty tickets. I guess. What are you playing? The garden? Uh, <laughs> that's ten... like the entire front row. Wow. <laughs> How big is your school? I don't know. <laughs> ten four packs of tickets. Are you gonna personally answer the phone? Ten. <laughs> four packs. Get out of here, man. Yeah, ten sets of what? four packs. Ten four packs of tickets. Then people call in for f four shows. Oh, okay. Oh, for four shows. Ten tickets for four shows. Is that right? <laughs> oh, my God. Who taught you, man? Spaz? <laughs> oh, this could possibly be the most confusing ticket giveaway ever. Well, the first Thank you, Foot. Maybe Spaz can come in and explain yeah. how it, it well, works. The it's, first ten calls. It's not based on the number system that we know. Let me see that. Yeah. Give me that. Mulan is the best way to remove hair. Mulan. Maybe you could remove Joe's tongue. <laughs> yeah, some tickets. Spaz, take it. Ten more packs. Uh, refer to illustration E. Let, let's just put it this way. If you want to go see Foot and the guys from Air Sick right. this weekend, give us a call. We'll give you tickets until our hand, hand gets tired, okay? Right. 212-757-1027. <laughs> Is that fair enough? Right. And you can call the club uh, at 516-785-8655. <laughs> Thank you. Tickets <laughs> are big rocks. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right. Tomorrow on the show, Brian Regan, very funny man. Rat eating. Uh, very popular guest of ours. And, uh, and disgusting rat eating tomorrow. You don't have to wait for a survivor. We give it to you live as it happens. Rat eating. Tomorrow. Tomorrow on, on the OP Thank you, man. Anytime, Einstein. The OP and Anthony Show. The Opie and Anthony Show. Blah, blah, blah. The Opie and Anthony Show. Blah, blah, blah. The show blows monkey ass. W N E of the W. Hey, Anthony, the Razor Rollerboard Scooters. My God, these things are the most popular item here in our studios and out on the streets. Driving home yesterday, I saw uh, five different people. Riding around on the Razor Rollerboard scooters. And uh, we love these things so much that uh, we replayed a 30-minute bit so we could, you know, fool around with them in the hallways today. The funniest thing is seeing the door fly open and seeing uh, uh, somebody come riding uh, through on the Razor scooter. And then, like, two more will come. Like, like it's some kind of derelict biker gang <laughs> on, on these uh, rollerboard scooters. Really uh, cool, gleaming stainless steel and aluminum inline scooter. They got the inline skate wheels on them. Mm -hmm. Real uh, smooth action, smooth ride, adjustable locking, steering arm, and they're durable. We've proven that, man. Yeah, we're smashing them all over the place. We like ride into walls with them. Yeah, Psycho Mark will just fling it. He'll he'll be riding it and jump off and just fling it. It'll go into a wall. And there's a brake on the back so you can slow down when you're going too fast. Who wants to do that? And and that's and, called the fag brake, if you <laughs> ask me. You touch that and you're taking it in the behind. It also folds up and you can pretty much carry it carry it with you when you're you're done using it. Yeah, anyway. lightweight, easy to uh, maneuver, foldable, compact storage, state of the art. This thing looks like something out of the future. It looks like uh, the Terminator. Yeah, we it looks like the Terminator's arm or something. It really does. It's pretty cool. And the, and it's a good weapon. I hit uh I hit Rick in the kneecap today with one. <laughs> Obi, Obi goes flying up the hallway. He jumps off of it, but still holding on to the uh, the handlebar thing. And the whole uh, part that you stand on spins around and clocks Rick in the kneecap. <laughs> Rick is like, ow! 
If you want to check out uh, what this looks like, go to sharperimage.com, Anthony. They have pictures of the uh, the Razor Rollerboard scooters, okay? It's, yeah. It's all the rage. It's the hottest new product this summer. We love them. You, you'll, you'll love them, too. You gotta um, see foot on that whoa, whoa, what, what, what? what? you got to see on foot it. on that scooter. Really? He's like, tell me about the rabbits. <laughs> it just goes flying by you. <laughs> all right. Uh, you can get the Razor Rollerboard scooters at uh, Sharper Image stores, Anthony. Yes. And you can win by visiting any New York area Sharper Image store. And filling out an entry blank, each store will give away five razors on Sunday, June 25th. No purchase necessary. Winner need not be present. It's the Razor Rollerboard Scooter. We'll have more to give away tomorrow on our show. Uh, the phones are tied up right now with uh, with Foot's uh, marathon ticket giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> marathon ticket giveaway. <laughs> yeah, how many tickets are we up to? <laughs> 37. <laughs> giving away 37 tickets so far. All right, anyway, it's the Razor Rollerboard Scooters, available at uh, Sharper Image.